<laughs> Good morning. I will call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for Saturday, July 24th, 2021 to order. The time is now 9.03 a.m. Um, we don't have anyone in the audience today, but uh, going forward, if anybody is interested in a mask or hand sanitizer, we do have that at the front of the room. Uh, anybody who would be making a public comment, if anyone shows up, we ask that they sign in on the sign-in sheet. And then when making their comment, steps towards the microphone in the front and clearly states their name and address. Um, first item on our list is the Pledge of Allegiance. So everyone, please stand. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Peter, is there anybody on Zoom? Uh, Dan Klein is on Zoom. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Dan. I have uh, I've left the, the mute privilege. That way, if you need to say something, Dan, you certainly can. Um, do we have any public comments that came in since last month via email or phone? No, 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 emails, no phone calls. Okay. Uh, we did have that one comment that you wanted to refer to that you sent us in the email. Give me a favor. Sure. No, sure. We did have that one comment with respect to the noise ordinance, I believe, last month. Um, there was an email with respect to what if we have a wedding or what if we have anything else. Oh, yes, else. yes. So, so do, you, do you want to field that one or do you want me sure, to? Sure, sure. So the noise ordinance, just to information for everyone out there, the noise ordinance is only activated if you call the police. Um, I can't say how the police will behave, but I would assume that this is something new and the police would say, hey, can you please quiet it down? If you know or think you're going to have an outdoor activity that might be loud, that might trigger the noise ordinance, I guess just the polite thing to do would be to let your neighbors know. So if they're aware of something and they could make other arrangements or be accommodating and just be neighborly, that's that's about it. So and being honest, I think most people, if you're yeah. if you're above what that threshold is, and yeah. it's there's there's a there's a pretty big difference between you have people over and you're having a wedding or something like right. that and blasting music really loud or setting off fireworks right. at like 11 o'clock at night. There's a stark difference between the two, but it's like a lot of the other things, the, the IPMC and everything else, we have to put the framework in place, otherwise we have no enforceability against it. So yes, it's there. Yes, we had to set a threshold, but no, chances are there's gonna be very few times where this becomes a problem, especially when it's things like uh, a wedding or yeah, something just, like just that. Let your neighbors know. Yeah. The the noise ordinance only gets activated if someone calls and complains about it. Other than that, you know, it's it's not in there in place, and the police aren't actively monitoring us. So I yeah. I, I, I have little to no concern. So just be nice and just be neighborly. That's all. Thank you. I I had kind of forgotten about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll move into the items for discussion, of which we have a pretty fair amount this month. Uh, the first item is the Stonecroft infield. Uh, the basin was made deeper, but it is not draining. Uh, this was uh, an enhancement that was not actually approved by our engineer, but uh, BCCD approved. Uh, they will need to be working on that, they being the stone group, uh, to resolve that so that it does drain properly prior to any of the things being closed, letters of credit or otherwise. Um, I know there was some discussion around that. The engineer was out and looked at it, and uh, there will be additional on that uh, particular item as we move forward in the next couple of months, as I know Stone is looking to finish up the, uh, the Stonecroft project. Okay, if we don't have any questions on that one, we'll move into the next one, the Catterman Hill and Stouchburg Road intersections. Uh, last month's Board of Supervisors meeting, we made a motion to adopt the ordinance. Uh, ordinance. This should have been a motion to advertise. It was just a, a slight word choice uh, misstep on my part. Uh, the ordinance was advertised. Uh, Sue spoke to Andy. Andy wasn't overly concerned about that. Just for best practice, what we will want to do today is, uh, and after I finish this explanation, I'll, I'll do that, but uh, we'll want to make a motion to amend the previous motion to, to reflect the desire to advertise rather than to adopt. And then at Thursday night's meeting, we will obviously then be able to adopt the ordinance without any sort of issue. Uh, so I'll make a motion to amend the prior motion to adopt at next meeting for the ordinance for sign placement at Catterman Hill and Stouchburg Road to instead be a motion to advertise the ordinance. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. 
Aye. Jim. Aye. Phenomenal. Uh, McCarthy Engineering is also, if they have not already, contacting the property owner to remove or trim the bushes that are obstructing the line of sight on the one side. Uh, I'll follow up with Jim McCarthy and see if that has been completed. And if not, I'll make a, a polite ask to have that done before this Thursday's meeting. Next up is the culvert at Marion Drive, uh, by where Jacob Weiss lives. Uh, we did not get the dirt, gravel, and low volume road grant. Uh, we are waiting for McCarthy Engineering to supply a uh, plan and rough cost estimate, similar to some of the other culverts that we were looking at doing, uh, with the intent being to have our road crew do the majority of the work to save cost. Um, speaking of culverts, we have two more on the agenda. The culvert out on Marion Drive, north of School Road by Oscar Manbeck. Uh, the inspection was done on April 27th by McCarthy Engineering, and they recommended that the southbound lane remain open, but should be inspected and monitors for, monitored for cracks and openings developing in the existing paving. The double crossing pipes should be replaced as soon as possible, and we're at this point just waiting for a cost estimate from McCarthy Engineering to, to focus on that one as well. Uh, the other culvert is the one on Sheridan Road by Gerald Hoover's farm uh, near 540 Sheridan Road. It continues to fail. The road crew uh, repositioned the plate and has applied more cold patch to it, but we're, we're waiting for the Chapter 105 permit to come through so that we can actually start work on replacement. Uh, that was the, the first culvert that we had ID'd and had the planning in for. And instead of doing additional oil and chip throughout the course of the, the remainder of 2021, we're, we're going to, as we had discussed before, shift our attention towards getting some of these culverts replaced while we have the funds in the account. Um, Spur Road and School Road intersections. Uh, at last month, we authorized the cost of $1,000 for Tulpahawken Township to lay five feet of macadam at the intersection of Spur Road. Um, Tulpahawken's Roadmaster was notified. I have not been out there yet to see if they've completed it, but uh, I have no doubt that Tulpahawken and Butch will, will have that done yeah, I, shortly. I don't think it is completed, but I, this will be on the agenda till it is completed. Okay, very just, good. I mean, it's just like a redundant thing every month, but. Yeah, no, that's fine. It's That's fine. I'm just. Just, I'll have to drive by at some point and see if they did it because yeah. sometimes things get done and you don't get notified right away, which is fine. There's a but, lot of stuff going on, but didn't say anything yeah, it, so. yeah. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is the road project for 2021. Uh, we had awarded Martin Paving uh, the contract for $95,350.32. Uh, due to a slight variance in width on the one road, it was 24 feet in a spot rather than 20. Uh, we would we did have a change order for one thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars and seventy three cents, uh, making a total bill of ninety seven thousand two hundred and sixty one dollars and sixty one cents. Uh, we would need to make a motion to approve this change order and the bill. Uh, I would make that motion now to approve the change order of one thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars and seventy three cents, changing the total cost of the project to ninety seven thousand two hundred and sixty one dollars and sixty one cents. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Next is the Aikens Accounting Audit. Uh, our 2020 audit is complete and has been advertised in the Reading Eagle. Uh, this was submitted to DCED and ultimately approved by DCED. Uh, so at this point, I think we're pretty much entirely done with that. So 2020 is. 2020 is closed out. Yes, Aikens had some recommendations and I had to inform them of, of some of the things that we we're doing. Uh, they're pleased um, on our ends and they were extremely useful in helping me um, correct some stuff in our system. There's still a little bit of uh, QuickBook items that I have to go over because it screwed up our, our reconciliation for the year. Um, but I could honestly say Aikens is wonderful and I'm really pleased with the thorough job that they've done in assisting us with our audit and um, hoping to continue to work with them. They yeah, they had, that's what um, they brought to light some budget recommendations and um, that was one of their concerns that we under budgeted for some things. And so we have to pull it up on the program and, and review it a little bit more carefully. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to review the books with you then. Um, yeah. Because I think some of this, just looking at the actual total budget versus yeah. what that report was, yeah. I think it's a situation where QuickBooks is looking at trying to prorate where we are in the year versus um, what the budget was, but we'll have to we'll have to yeah, dig into it yeah, more. Yeah, I'll have to show you um, what I've been doing. Because um, you could do it monthly. Yeah. And um, 
but the numbers should be the same. The, the percentages should be the same. In theory, yeah. yes. But like I said, the one the one that jumped out at me was the like uh, the, police. the police one because yeah, yeah, I actually have oh, the budget okay. up. So the police the police amount was fifty two thousand one hundred and sixty dollars and forty eight cents, which is which is this is uh, this one here. Yeah. So that one is that amount. That's what the agreed contract is. Right. And that report that you generated, I want to say, said something like we had only budgeted thirty two thousand for it. Oh no. No, but we didn't because yeah we didn't like um, i'm looking at the approved yeah. budget right now so yeah. that's that's where i called into yeah. question maybe quickbooks is trying to do like okay you're six months or you're yeah. this percentage of the year in and it's saying because we pay this by installment so if we paid fifty two thousand dollars up front and it yeah. says so was that the 2020 budget or 2021 this is, i'm looking at the 2021 budget because this is the and for oh, the past couple yeah, of years, yeah. it has never been thirty-two thousand. Yeah. No, 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 no. So, so I have to look at the yeah. Program. So I want to look at it yeah. with you, but it could yeah. be it, it could be less of a problem than what it appears on the surface, just okay. because maybe okay. it's trying to do something with the numbers to be helpful. Yeah. But is instead making it look like we're yeah. massively under budgeted. Scroll up to yeah. tax revenue. Yeah, absolutely. And it's going to be like a couple of sets of digits. I just want to make sure yeah this, so yeah it might be the program doing yeah so tax revenue for okay, so real estate tax so i don't understand why the computer gave me 203 when we proposed oh no yeah that yeah. just doesn't make Cause, sense because this is the adopted budget like yeah. proposed is what we ultimately we adopted. adopted so yeah I that's that's where i want to look at that and see if there's maybe something goofy with the program. there with the program yeah because like the numbers that because you had it says 203 and that should be the cumulative that yeah everything. yeah hmm. Okay. Yeah, because so, the projected for 2020, because okay. we were expecting like 2020 was low. Um, and we were expecting 2021 to not be too terribly bad because of hopefully having COVID go away. Yeah, but so, so that's that's really unusual. Um, we are still over though, you know, considering which, the tax revenue. Yeah. Um I mean the fact that we've had less delinquencies yeah. on that yeah. is good. If we're gonna have a budgeting yeah, situation, let me just do the math here. Yeah. And then that's the delinquent, and then um, because here I'm thinking like we're like way over budget, and uh, what are we what have we taken in so far? Well, we've taken in two hundred and ninety nine thousand. We're not well for total year. Total year, I, the 299 might be slightly high, but if we're going to have an overage in a budget, I'd rather have an overage in a revenue category than an expense. But, but yeah, I mean, yeah, because we'll yeah, huh. we'll we'll look at it yeah. more. But the bottom yeah. line is, uh, it's a it's a well founded concern. But I think the concern is less about the actual content of the budget and more yeah. about how the the program is spitting out the numbers. Yeah. Okay, so it might be just user. Well, I don't think yeah. it's user. I don't yeah. think it's user. I think it's probably, like I said, if it's trying to prorate something and say like you're six months through the year, here's 50%, you've taken in $299. Cause like I said, right. with the right. police or with the tax revenue, we're not getting that equally one month at a time. This we get, say, we get exactly chunks. Because Irene, uh, I mean, Irene, you know, most collect taxes are collect right. In the discount period. Yes. Right. Right. And we, we get like it right every month. Right. Yes. But we we you get know. it in chunks. But but so the computer, like what I try to do is is give me the info from January through June. It's going to give me the total amount that we've collected. What it should be doing is, is giving you giving me the percentage for twelve months, and we were at within twelve months. Yes. But it seems to not be doing that. Yeah. That's yeah. and that that was my concern. Yeah. It's like it's trying to give you here's what you've collected so far, but here's six months worth of the the full budget. And again, like with the police, if we pay $52,000 right up front and we're only six months through the year, it's going to go, whoa, buddy, you're $20,000 over on this. Right, right. Same thing with the revenue. We're expecting, we've taken in 299000 but if we budgeted 234, it's going to go, you've taken in 299 out of 120. That's, that's what I, I think is happening here. And we just got to so, look and see what the field so settings on, are. On the general... Uh, on tax revenue, we've collected $299,658.10. Just doing quick math, we should be collecting for the whole year a little over $400,000. So, but it's telling us that we're over budget already. Mm -hmm. So, and 
this is not the amount that I entered into the budget. It, it could be because this is the whole, it should have been budget for 400 something. So I don't know what's happening or whether the computer didn't accept the budget, but I recall well, entering yeah. it in. Well, the thing, the right. thing that I basically think, like I said, it's doing six month mark. Yeah. Is if you're at, let's say 300,000, right. you didn't have additional revenue. Right. That realistically, depending on how it's aggregating the other categories, yeah. that could be six months of the year. Right. Right. And so, so what I thought that I was doing within the program is saying, let's look at it where we're at now in comparison to the whole year, but the computer might not be doing that for yeah. me. Uh, we so, just got to look and see yeah, what the, no, the settings sure, sure. are. But this way could report that's out accurately. The one, the one night very yeah. late when I was yeah. looking at this, I was like, I bet. I, I know what this is because looking at yeah. you're, you're super detail numbers. oriented. Right. So like it's the numbers, numbers would have gotten entered like, in, right? Oh, why is this um, bothering me? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll get it sorted out, but I think okay. that's I, I, of the things that, to lose sleep on. I don't think that's one of them okay. for one simple reason is the, the, the budget is the budget we're yeah. tracking against those numbers. It's, yeah. it's probably just a reporting issue. I think so. Uh, but, but like going back to the original bullet, the number eight on the agenda, mm -hmm. Aikens, like any issue, I can't even say issue, more, more so any concern yeah, or recommendation. Any recommendations, but we've addressed, and I think moving forward, um, it, it, things are going to be smoother and easier and down the road that, um, uh, whoever takes over this position in the future, I'm you know, hoping to show them what we've been doing because people shouldn't be reinventing the wheel every time they take this job. It should be a smooth transition and this is best practices. And that's something that I think that we really focused on, especially with um, everyone that we've brought in to work with us. You know, Thank you, Dan. Dan's very detail oriented. Aikens and, and even Rick Rule coming in, helping us out. It, it's, this is the way things should be done from an accounting perspective with respect to township code, et cetera. So we just want to keep on moving forward and keeping things uh, clean, available, up to date, and where they should be at. And so if anyone needs to look at any information, it's a click of a button away or pulling a file. So yeah, I, I, I must yeah. say, I've having gone through a couple of audits in years prior, I'm yeah. particularly happy with how Aikens did this because oh they God, were... Yeah. They were easy to work with, but they were also extremely thorough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, instead of scrambling what, like I did the past two years, January 2nd, I'm going to be able to put everything in a box, click on all my reports, put download it to a flash drive, and, and, and we're done. Yeah. You know. Which is good. This should be yeah. an easy thing, not, yep. not something yep. that yeah. everybody dreads going into. Yeah, good record keeping, so... Sorry, I didn't mean to take up No, so no, no, no. That, that's, we're, we're here to discuss. There's no need to apologize. Uh, Speaking of things being available, the next item is the website. Um, I've not had a huge amount of time over the past like three weeks, but uh, I did send out emails to people. I saw Sue, I think you signed in. No. no? Okay. Well, somebody somebody changed the password for the Marion Township. Not me. Not me. Oh, it might have been me when I wasn't no. wasn't paying attention. No, but I have um, no idea what anything I, is. Uh, I sent out yeah. uh, right. credentials for that. So I'll work with you guys on how to get signed in. Okay. Um, I I've gotten signed in, but I haven't gotten a chance to like really do anything like sit down and start putting stuff into the calendar, data entry, things like that. Um, but it's there and we have the ability now. There was actually a problem two weeks ago when I called Civic where it was not letting us sign in and I had to open a support ticket and they had to get like an engineer on it, but they had it fixed in like four or five hours. Okay. So, okay. so um, that brings up another thing about the website. Um, would you be willing to have somebody, maybe Irene's son, Josh, yeah. like input stuff? Like, yeah. So what I'm thinking is have him scan all the ordinances I, put him, and him put them in. Yeah. I, just, I'm, I don't have the time to do I'm, that. I'm all for it. Yeah. I'm, I'm swamped for time, and too, then, so I empathize. So, yeah. I can give him the meeting schedule and yeah. can put that those yep. on the calendar. Um, like Ju that, you know, simple things like that. Junior webmaster. There you go. <laughs> he would love that. In fact, yeah, I meant to ask you about that. Um, see how comfortable you felt with Yeah, I, I have no yeah. problem with that because okay. anything that he puts up, you'd obviously look at, I'd look at, Sue would look at. Right. If there's yeah. a mistake, yeah, right. we'll, we'll spot it relatively yeah. quick, but uh, not to make make it sound like I have any any doubt or any suspicion that he'd oh, make mistakes, but yeah. I, I, I everybody's prone to human right, error, yeah. myself included. Well, yeah. I mean, even if I put something, well, it's best to peer. Hey, it's best to peer review things. It's, yeah. yeah. But yeah. no, I I think that's a fantastic idea. We can set him up with an account specific to him, and then give him rights to do stuff. And like, I'll work with him if if he wants to learn how to do like the Zoom stuff for like the video sure. editing. I'd be happy sure. to teach him. Um, if there's things that he wants to learn how to do, that's maybe a little more involved on the site. Most of it's pretty point and click. Most yeah. of it's pretty drag and drop. Right. And then the other um, thing is, um, 
Like Berks County still did not take our old site. I, I need to actually physically talk to somebody because there's an A record that you have to make on their side, which is a redirector. Okay. Um, it's not something that even if I signed in to like our area of the county portal, I can't just yeah, apply okay. that. Yeah. Um, so I, I got to get somebody on the phone and have them do it. Okay. Um, it's not overly complicated. It's a, a simple, like it's essentially, it's a text file, like a notepad file that you, you apply. It's getting somebody to do it and then waiting for it to replicate because okay. sometimes that can take like four to six hours. But. And then there's, so Civic never took, so we have our old zoning and our new zoning. Yeah. But we can do that. We right? can do that now. Yeah, we can, we can do that. So that's one of the things that maybe if I get a chance to sit down with your son, mm -hmm. um, rather than having the same file or the same file um, exist in two places and be linked separately, it's really it's best practice from a design standpoint to have it in one place and then do symbolic links to it in various places. That way, if you ever change that master file, you don't have to go through like seven places and change right. it each place. Right. Um, so that's something that, uh, admittedly speaking, I just need to get a little time with, sit mm -hmm. down and that's try true. and map out some stuff so that we have really everything, if you want to look at it like in a traditional physical file standpoint, everything's in one filing cabinet. And then you may have like a, a post-it note, like drawer three, folder number 16 or something like that. Um, same thing just with a digital capacity that if you have a link directly to the ordinance, it's obviously the ordinance, but if you have a link on a subsequent page of like, hey, we're doing a uh, um, Western Berks Planning Commission meeting, our, our zoning is available here that you would link to that same file okay. each time rather than uploading a, a new copy each time. Um, okay. So yeah, yeah to, sure put it, to put it lightly, I would be delighted yeah, to, to teach your son how to do we that. Know he's available in the evenings and he'll be looking for a letter of recommendation for college from I, the guys then. I would, be, <laughs> I would be happy to teach him and if he needs a letter of recommendation, that's yeah, also yeah. something that I can help him Absolutely. with. Absolutely. Um, okay, so I don't think we have to labor too much on that, but the, the long-term, short-term even goal is to get the website spun up with a lot mm -hmm. of content and there's a lot of content mm -hmm. that needs to go up. Mm -hmm. Um, long term, and especially like if your son has time or if we can get other people that are able to do it, um, essentially it's just transcription, data entry around like the ordinances. Because mm -hmm. we have scanned copies, but sometimes scanned stuff, especially the older stuff with handwritten things or if it's skewed, um, they don't do what's called OCR particularly well. So it doesn't capture what's actually in there if you search mm -hmm. for it. Um, it would be really advantageous to do a type, what's called a type over on it, where we essentially type it up again in like Word or something. Mm -hmm that's what's actually put on the web page and there's a link to the original master copy that way if you searched like marion township uh zoning ordinance on google it will find it rather than trying to potentially badly parse that pdf mm -hmm. um very useful but very time consuming i'll help with that um, i don't mind typing okay um cool next thing on the agenda is the cold summit uh hold on so let me see something Okay. I didn't see the thing on there that was supposed to be there and it's there. It's just, I can't see it from this distance. Uh, the Cold Summit Farmers Preserve Industrial Park Traffic Planning and Design. Uh, that is not only a mouthful, but it's also a project in Mill Creek Township, Lebanon County. Uh, Wolmelsdorf Borough is willing to share the costs of the traffic study with us and they have appointed TPD to do the traffic impact study. Uh, Jim will be our point person, and the, proc the project is encompassing approximately 1.4 acres within Marion Township. Uh, so, so it's right in our backyard, but not really in it. But did you see that email between Jim McCarthy and... As Luke Teller at Langan? Somebody from Langan, yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't understand that, so... So, basically, in order to do that, we would have, based on that email, we would have to defer is what they're asking but jim said that we really probably shouldn't defer based on our traffic concerns that we should continue moving forward with the traffic study with wolmelsdorf so at this point unless i'm wrong unless i've read that incorrectly we shouldn't we basically just let it go we don't just don't touch it for right okay. now right. um because if we defer then we basically are saying like we're not we don't have any concerns yeah. about this okay. Our okay. Yeah. yeah so we we certainly don't want to do that right this second all right Okay, next up on the agenda is... Is, uh, is part of that in the township? Just no. Bear, it's just a smidge. Yeah. Um, also, Jim, can you do me a favor? Can you tilt the mic down a little more? I th yeah, I think you're, you're good where you're sitting. I think it's just it was pointed up like above your head. Um, 
so yeah, it's it's only 1.4 acres. So it's basically like right at our backyard and just a, a just a toe is in. But the concern still exists of it being so close to us that we're going to have traffic overflow, big rigs, other trucks, people working there coming through and putting a lot more stress and volume on the roads than exists right now. I can show you where it is on the tax map if you Yeah, want it's to see it's it. basically honestly speaking right in your backyard like right behind Stonecroft. I don't think I have a copy of that in here. I mean we can we can dig that up after yeah. the meeting too. Yeah. Um so next up is building maintenance. Uh we had received some quotes for meeting room renovations. It's right here. It's right here. Oh, okay, so we actually found it good. Yeah. This is Stonecroft. That's the house next, you know, west, and then it's right here. That really That's is a corner. Yeah, it's it's literally on Lemon County. It's only that part right there, that joint. It's just the traffic impact we're worried about. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, people obviously have to get to and from there. No, because the majority of the property is in Lebanon County. Yeah. yeah. Okay, building maintenance. Uh, we did receive some quotes from Irig and Incas Construction and Mike's for modeling. Uh, we did receive also a quote from Carl Keith to add central air conditioning to all three heat pumps. Uh, several contractors came out and took measurements. Uh, Irene, you were looking at estimates for maintenance, but you were having a, a situation where you called a lot of people and I did, nobody I did. bothered to call back. I think we're up to 28 or 29 contractors. We did have a couple more people stop out. Um, <laughs> but honestly, because of last meeting and we had a lot of concerns that were brought up, um, one individual was talking about preserving the building and historic value. Um, I did look into that. Um, there's a federal uh, website. There's also a state and a local. I don't think any of the local organizations would touch this place. Um, as far as the state level, there's something odd about the website. So I went with the national criteria. Um, some of that criteria includes a significant historical event that occurred here. Nothing, you know, to that nature, other than I could say Sue graduated from here. So that's our significant when historical event. Just went to school yeah, here. yeah, she went to school here. So that's, that's our significant event. But unfortunately, I don't think that would qualify from the national at the at the national level. It wouldn't secure us the funds that we need. We, we love Sue. Um, there's no uh, architectural value to the building. There's nothing unusual about it. There's no big architect of fame that designed the building. So if anyone would like to look, it's under, the, there's a, a, a website you could look at, forgive me for the uh, general meeting, I'll have that information, but we don't meet any criteria. The other aspect of that is the funding that we would need to quote unquote restore the building back to its original historical stature would be astronomical. So if you could correct me if I'm wrong, from the time that this building was originally built to the in, time in the 1800s, in the 1800s okay. to the time that you went here, there had to have been re renovations to bring it up to par to accommodate the children at that point. So I, I would assume at some point heating, well, cooling. So bathrooms, yeah, bathrooms, bathrooms alone, like, like think about because the differences. Right, the bathrooms are, that was a classroom. Yeah. Right. So, so, I mean, you could easily look around the building at the condition that it's in now. We have it where it's usable um, and, and that's of a concern. So I, I would think any kind of a restoration that that's off the table, it doesn't meet criteria. To have that kind of funding, I think it would literally take millions of dollars. Not to mention it would make yeah. the, the building unusable right, for right. what, what we we're trying to use right. it for. We wouldn't be able to use it for, for meeting purposes, office purposes, et cetera. So it's it's not a museum piece, et cetera, et cetera. So that kind of funding is not available and it, it doesn't meet criteria for everything that I've looked at. Yeah. Um, going back to the other side of that, and, and part of that is, is us getting the quotes so we did receive another quote for the meeting room yeah, renovation. Yeah, yeah. So when we're looking at numbers just for renovating this room alone, we're looking anywhere between fifty-four to forty-four thousand dollars. That's just one room. Mm -hmm. We had briefly mentioned or talked about it at a prior uh, meetings. Uh, let's say we would take the ARP funds and renovate the garage and create a new office. I'm, I'm pointing, I'm sorry, I'm such yeah. a hands on, <laughs> I'll put my hands on it. We were going to renovate the garage and create that as, an, as a new office because unfortunately we do need the space. If this is going to be between forty-four dollars to $54,000, I imagine that that would be double, if not more, because there's so much need in there. I'm not even talking about, there's, there's paint and plaster peeling in the hallway. Um, uh, Carl Keith gave us an estimate for 
uh, upgrading the central air and heat pumps in, in the rooms. That was about seven, you know, roughly $17,000. Mm -hmm. So let's take 45 plus 17. Where are we at with that? Basically, that's so 16, basically 62,000. You consider right. the bricks need to be repaired right. because yeah. there's no mortars in right. places. You know, the soffits were never finished. Yeah, we did, we did like three yeah. quarters of the building. We did the right. worst one. Yeah, right yeah. So, so again, we, we, we took a step back because of what uh, some of the public comments were, we took a step back and said, what does the building need from a, just a straightforward maintenance issue? And unfortunately, I was thinking a little bit about the building collapse in Florida mm -hmm. and, and brick, um, Sue just mentioned the brick repointing. What's happening with the water that comes in between the windows? Some of it comes into the building. Some mm -hmm. of it, I'm sure, is going in between the layers of the brick between the interior and exterior. Are we going to have a wall collapse at some point? It's a possibility. It's a possibility. Yeah. I think we're still structurally sound, obviously yeah. not an engineer here, but that's the reason that I zeroed in so hard on that, that corner there is because of the amount of water that was getting in. It's evident yep. in the interior, in the hallway. And you notice that, now that the soffit is fixed and there's downspout there, that wall has dried out. It, yes. Paint's peeling off, yes. Which, is which it's a, it's, it's a good right. and a bad thing yeah. at the same right. time. Yeah. But right. that's, that's was the concern yeah. that I have is if we leave this go for much longer, especially if we have a freeze and a thaw and then a yep. refreeze during the winter, you could lose half the building. Yep. Um, yep. So I just, if I can cut in for just a second, sure, no, I, I'm, no, I'm no. still of the mind that we're never going to get it back to like true no. historical value. No. No. What we should be doing, and I, I don't think trying to find another piece of property and putting a pole building in is necessarily the answer either because there's concerns around finding suitable property, um, building it, putting the infrastructure in like electrical, uh, sewage disposal, a well, um, having it in, I, I personally, I'd prefer to have it in close proximity to the playground or where a recreational area is, because it's going to make things a little more tight knit. And it's also going to make maintenance on it easier that we don't have to truck something, uh, across the township in order to mow every couple of weeks or every week, um, that we should be trying to make this building the best that it can be and trying to, and I, you may disagree yeah. and yeah. you're entitled to, yeah. um, but trying to use the space that we have. Um, and it, it's not going to be something that we can wave a wand and have everything right. done all at once. It's something that we're going to have to plan for over the next five or so years to do. But I would think it would be better to rehab or renovate the building and try and keep the original spirit of it. It's, it's not, as you put, right. like, yes, it has historical significance in Marion Township, but it's not something that we can put on like a historical register right. or have a special historic site or anything for. Um, it's better to have it usable and retain its character and its charm than to either go one direction, one extreme or the other, and mm -hmm. try and put it back to the 1800s version of the building yeah. or to just get rid of it entirely. Right. Um, I tend to, to err on a little more the kind of the center path, the moderate aspect of it. Although I do recognize the, the benefit of having yeah. a purpose built space that has like the uh, disaster area, right. um, that sort of stuff. Um, if we, and again, money right. being the real limiting factor here, there's a lot of good space on the second floor, but we have access problems. Right. We don't have heating in there. Yep. Um, there's a number of either solution presents problems. Right. So, so I, I, I've, I've, I've taken a step back and said, let me look at the bigger picture of the things that the, just the building needs and not from a cosmetic perspective, the uh, brick repointing, the parking lot is a disaster. Um, there's the sidewalk that was ripped out a number of years ago. Back and windows and if you just kind of use mike's numbers and and try to just do simple math there's four sets of triple windows mm -hmm. there's four sets of double windows and then there's 16 individual windows all of them are custom size mm -hmm. and that even deletes the two that were replaced so that could be anywhere between 80 to hundred thousand dollars to replace the windows alone we've got seventeen thousand dollars for the heat pumps just these certain areas um, so, so I'm going to get all the numbers that I could get. So and even getting multiple bids, it just, it, it's not even making this place nice. It's making this place kind of safe. And then to me, the other problem is the second story. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all this unusable space. Yeah. And, and, and to me, it, it, it's a pity, but again, I don't think from a financial perspective, I think we're just putting good money after bad that because of the degree of neglect in this place, it, I, I think it's just going to. It, to me, it's going to be a waste of money. I hate to phrase it like that, mm. but, and, and I, I'm going to bring to the table all the numbers and all the information and, and get, have a comparison. This is what we can do if we stay. 
this is what we could do if we leave and rebuild. Another option is demolishing this building. I you know, don't yeah. like to say that, yeah. but at the same time, building something new on the same footprint, which may be um, a little bit less expensive, but at the same time, we still have those tanks that are underground that are an issue and size and accommodation is an issue. We need more space for the, the vehicles. We need more space for the salt shed. So I don't want to say that, that we outgrew this place, but, but in some ways we did. And there's so much space that's here that is so unusable. Mm -hmm. I want to have a bigger and better environment for the public to come for, for meetings. Um, we could potentially have a place where people could rent the meeting room um, and definitely an evacuation center. To me, mm -hmm. that that's high on my list of things to do. And, uh, you know, it, it sounds awful, but again, addressing the needs in case there's a pandemic, an entry point where the public is separated from people working in the office and anticipating the needs for this community down the road, having kind of that force, I say, we know what we need now. We know what deficiencies we have now. Where is this community going to be at in 10, 15, and 50 years from now? And, and planning accurately for that. You know, if, if we don't do anything about this building, it, it's not going to be here. Yeah. You know? I, I don't want to hand off a pro another problem to someone down the road because, unfortunately, I think we we're all handed off a lot of unresolved problems that people just pushed under the rug and said, oh, I'm not going to look at it or no, it's not that important. But it is that important. Mm. And no. it, it boils down to dollars and cents. It I, really does. I agree. Yeah. I completely agree. Yeah just throwing that out there yeah. the one of the concerns that i had like we obviously i think don't want to bulldoze the building i think that would be there would be public outcry it, yeah um but if we if we retain the building right. we still have to carry the cost of obviously maintenance otherwise it's right. going to fall apart heating electrical everything um unless we were to donate it to somebody some yeah. group but then they they're going to face similar problems to put it lightly it's not cheap to, to keep a building going, let alone a building of this it's size. Not, it's not. Um, we could sell. We could sell, but then that, that creates other problems because of it being like tax exempt and municipal right. property. And, and there's, there's right. the, but that, the, that's tank, its own problem. the buried tanks yeah. alone are right. a huge logistical problem for selling a property like this. Um, otherwise, like we might be able to, and the only thought that comes to mind is nobody uses the tennis court anymore. Nobody uses the multi-purpose court. We might be able to get a building be kind of a, a long, narrow building, but you might be able to build something over there and then use some of the space over here for like garage, salt shed, recreation. It's just a spitball idea that we, we might be able to get creative, but we still face the problem of what's going on with this building, that we've, we've addressed one concern, but not really right. the underlying root cause of the problem. Right. I said, if we sell, then it's not our headache. Yeah, yeah it's not our headache, but then right. we'd, if, for example, if we sold just the building like if we subdivided the lot because I, I don't think we'd want to lose the space unless we could find a property close by right. and i don't really think based on my recollection of the zoning maps there's really not any properties that are either for sale right or not in some sort of ag preserve or easement or like clean and green or something like that that would preclude us from being able to, to buy it right. even if we wanted to um so I'm, I'm just gathering all the numbers and kind of going to throw it out there and say, this is what we need to have the building brought up to speed. I mean, we're not even talking about repairing the plaster and the paint in the hallway here. Yeah. It's just things that just need it's, to get- It's not done. cosmetic, it's yeah, structural. Yeah, it, it, it's all structural stuff that you, when you take a step back, you're like, wow, you know, this has been, been really neglected. And that last estimate even talked about repairing this plaster and they said that it will probably crack again. Right. Yeah. So you yeah. do all that repair and then Two years from now, it's right back where it was. Yeah, the only way that you'd really get around that, because plaster walls, especially as the age, they're kind of notorious for that, would be to stud out the wall right. and put fresh drywall on. Right. Because it could crack beneath it, you wouldn't know or care, but um, that then cuts into the size of the room. And honestly, it's it's a decent enough size room, but when you have a full audience, you only really can get, I don't know what, max, like 25 people right. in here. No, I think we um, have 28 chairs. 28? We okay. Could I mean, I wasn't far off. So but, they say we get 30 people in here. Yeah. Plus Either way. So basically let's call it like 40 people max occupancy. Yeah. It's not that large of a space. No. Um, it's not really well suited for doing things like having the community association do bingo nights or whatever they want to do as a fundraiser. It's, it's here, but it's not really like we're, we have a lot of space, but we're not able to use yeah. the, the vast majority of it effectively. I know, anyway. I know you don't want to tear it down necessarily, but is there any money available to do so? Um, we need a demolition permit. 
<laughs> well, I think Jim's question was, do yeah. we, is there, are there grants and things for, for that nature? And I think there, and yeah. yes and no, there are grants for specific yeah. things. Like when you do like the evacuation site, you might be able to get some money for that. You might to get, be able to get some money right. for maybe other little things, but there's not really yeah, one big not. wholesale grant for like, we want to put a building in. No. And we could use a little bit of ARP funds, but it, but it's, uh, we could use a limited amount of funds if it relates to responding to the COVID emergency. So any AV equipment we would purchase could be used for any cost relating to that. Um, anything we would do towards doing that new, like if we were to do new office in the garage would be, said, um, yeah. Vent ventilation. Ventilation, yeah. 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 I wonder if the, uh, the air conditioner, like the heat well, pump that's stuff what would, I was wondering. Yeah, because that's part of the ventilation, ventilation. system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can, can, can we segue into the ARP? Yeah, abs bit? absolutely, okay. absolutely. So, so we did receive the ARP funds. Um, I would like to move those funds because they're sitting on our checking account. I'd like to move them over to our savings account okay. just to gain a little bit of interest until we could decide what we want to do. Every week, there's new guidelines that come down from the. Uh, um, I do have that on the agenda. I think yeah, we're, it's, it's okay. We'll just okay. We'll, we'll hop around think, to it. I think we need to talk to Andy too because um, we need a resolution to amend our budget. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I gave you that sample resolution. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's in here. Yeah. Um, so, so we have to make a motion to uh, accept those funds and and and. Uh, um. Amanda, our, our budget, mm -hmm. just like you said, forgive me, my brain is like two steps ahead of what I want to say. And then if you do yeah. move money around, you should have a motion to do Yeah, that. I'm going to go grab the exact amounts. Mm -hmm. I, have yeah, I was going to, I didn't have that amount. Yeah, to I have it, it, I have it. Let me, I'll go grab it yeah, right out okay. of the pile. Um, and so for right now, because we're not, we have no definite plan over what we want to do with those funds. And I'm a little bit wary of all the changes that are coming down on how the funds could be used. I'd rather just sit on them. I have no yeah. problem with that until and, we figure out what we want right, to do specifically. Right. Yeah. And well, so you have until 2024 yeah. right. to come up with a plan. plan. Yeah. And then you have until the end of 2026 to spend it. Right. Now, there time. was a just on the discussion board, there was a question asked can the AA. AAR. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was going to say that at one point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, can the money be used on culvert replacements? And the answer was yes. Really? Yes. I thought it wasn't. Because it says storm, it can be used for stormwater. That's why I, I don't, I didn't have, I, I didn't, I wanted to put on here and I did um, the four categories that it can be used for. Okay. Like, and just, you know, specifically. I'll have that on for Thursday night. Yeah, that could also be subject to change. It's well, it could, without it's notice not, too. Everything's changing already. Yeah. You know, it just, but yeah, when I saw that the other day, um, and I believe it was responded to by somebody from PSATS, I was like, wow. That's well, a, that's a, that that surprises me because yeah, that surprises me. And the one the other thing that concerns me is like grand total, we're looking at a little over two hundred thousand dollars. It was two hundred and one. Yeah. Something. Um, Culvert costs, if it's anywhere between, let's say, 70 and 90,000, we're looking at maybe two, two, two and a half mm -hmm. culverts. But still, that's two. It's, it's two, two and a half culverts, yeah, yes. Yeah. But um, the money may not go as far there, whereas we do have money in liquid fuels and things like right, that. We right. may have better utility of the AR ARPA money for doing building-related right. stuff rather than the road-related right, stuff. Right, Um but again, this is, this is going to be something that I have no problem sitting on the money for a bit. It's not going anywhere. We're not in a rush. Mm -hmm. and figuring out what the best utility of it is. Mm -hmm. um, we obviously, we have plenty of needs and not enough money to, to address all those mm -hmm. needs all at once. We just have to figure out what order and, and how we want to go about tackling mm -hmm. those things. And then I said to Reen, it, it can be used for revenue loss. You know, and she said there really didn't have much. I said, but even if we had $5,000 of revenue loss, if we use it for revenue loss, then we can spend it on anything. We can mm. spend it on roads. We can spend it on anything. You know, pretty much every, all the other categories were limited. It has to be COVID related mm -hmm. in some way. Yeah. You know, where if we can say we have, say we have $10,000 in revenue loss, that's $10,000 we can spend on roads yeah. or culverts or yep. whatever, you know. No, it's, it's a good, it's or a building good, renovations or, you know, whatever. It's yeah. a good shift of, yeah. One specific, specifically budgeted line item to another. Yeah. For sure. Um, I would have to look at the budget and see what we actually lost because yeah. we actually, I think, we got more revenue than we were expecting because we were expecting 
a loss because of COVID. Right. Um, well, and I think because we do have a lot of farmers in the community, you know, not people that work externally, externally, yeah. that it, that may be why we didn't have as much revenue loss as some other municipalities. That's, that's true. That's actually, that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. You know, because the crops still grow, keep growing, the cows still producing milk, you know, the chickens are still being shipped off, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and the other part of that is initially we thought we'd be able to give money to the Marion Township Community Association. They have yeah. to use it for something COVID related. Yeah. yeah. But like I said, yeah. it, it's just, it's yeah. going to be kind of a shell game for us. Mm -hmm. We just, we allocate $10,000 extra right. to them and then use the, the mm -hmm. ARP money for something mm -hmm. that we would right. have normally right. allocated right. money to like mm -hmm. building renovations mm -hmm. um now so, we can use it to improve our playground yeah but i mean it would probably be best served to to kind of i, I don't want to i don't want to make it sound like we're doing something un, unseemly here but shift money around right. in the various budget lines so that we can still give the money to them because mm -hmm. the community association being a, an actual charity is going to be eligible for a lot more things like the grants. They can get matching grants. Right. So that ten thousand that we right. give them could turn into twenty thousand. Right. Whereas if we spend it out of pocket, it's ten thousand right. dollars. Right. Um. Right. So that's that's just something that we're going to have to be kind of cognizant of. Yeah. But back to mm -hmm. your point, Irene, I have no problem moving it to the checking or from the checking account to the yeah. savings account. Yeah. It's just, uh, honestly speaking, it makes sense if we're if we're going to make interest on it when it's sitting there oh, for yeah. the next year. Yeah, we're not we're not and doing anything. There was with discussion it right on the discussion or, or things on the set discussion board. Um. If you do move it into savings, into an account that makes, you know, gives you interest, makes money for you, um, do you have to spend that interest money on something COVID related? And the answer was no. That's your money, no matter how much money you make. Okay, so this, this might be an interesting exercise for us in terms of figuring out if we have that commingled with our normal money in the savings account, how do we differentiate the interest earned on that particular chunk versus interest on the entirety Total. of the account? I, I don't think we have to worry about that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that that's just a. Uh, uh, but you're going to have to report that interest. On that's your that's yeah. that's my concern. Uh, mm -hmm. Just use a compounding calculator if the okay. interest remains the same. So, which it, which it should. All right, so so I'll uh, I'll pull Aikens about that. Yeah, because okay. whether whether we figure it out one way or the other, that's something that we should probably set up a separate code of accounts for. Yeah, and no, no, that's and, that's and, and, yeah. And, that's yeah, and, and that's, differentiate. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's taken care of. Yeah. I don't think we'd have to pull out the specific amount that we'd earn on just on this sum. I would imagine it would just be the total sum. Except that we have a bunch in the savings account already, so that would right. kind of be a skewed number. Uh, it, it's more work for sure, but I think it would be beneficial for us to have like normal interest, like ARPA yeah. interest. That way, in the you event of an audit, well, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's you, you can do it. It's not terribly easy, or you could set up a separate account, um, which. I don't know, do we want to maybe talk about setting up a separate account? Because yes, it's a little extra work. It's an additional account, but well, like it's going to keep things the most. Fees, and on the discussion board, you know, it was like, well, we have to order checks then. And it's you fees. Know, that yeah, it's monthly fees. That's, yep. so it, and it's yeah. a mixed thing on the discussion board. Like some yeah. people are saying we're going to do the, the extra account just to keep it, Yeah. you know, total like that and then some people are saying no i'm just going to put it in my general fund it's just like a mixed bag on the right I, I think if we had millions of dollars that would be an issue but we don't yeah you know mm -hmm. and and so say the yeah. amount just um, so everybody knows okay, may exactly. I make the motion um i would prefer that you wait until thursday yeah we, let's just sure. do that thursday no but for, the, for the record let's okay, put sure. it. because then if you make a motion then you have to resend it and no like, problem yeah. you know, no problem yeah. um, it's so complicated no problem. The total amount is one hundred thousand eight hundred forty-eight dollars and seventy-nine cents. Okay. I mean, just think about it more till Thursday. And yeah, let's ruminate that, and uh, we'll need we'll just Thursday night. We'll do yeah. the resolution to amend the budget. You know, maybe he is he can kind of clue us in on what other municipalities are going to that. Right. No one around us received a uh, um, a tremendous amount. The Wormelsdorf Wormelsdorf earned uh, I shouldn't say earned, got about uh, a little more than twice what we did. Yeah. But they have more people. So right. yeah. And so and Rabazonia, you know, they have more right. people too. And, yeah. So yeah, everyone's but 
I don't know. It's just, it's so troubling every week I'm looking at it. You're looking at it. It's, it's changing. <laughs> yeah. So I'd rather sit on it probably for a year, which sounds mm -hmm. terrible. Mm -hmm. you know, mean, and initially, it's it's you not know, going anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And initially they did say, you know, just talk about, keep talking about what you want to do with the money and try to come up with a plan and, yep. you know, and then wait. And they already changed the time frame. I mean, initially yep. it was, you had to spend it by the end of 2024. Now they're saying, no, you don't. You have two more years, you know, so you know, and they said the regs change their mind every month, so. <laughs> yeah. Now, I think we should give some serious thought about what direction we want to go with the building. That's that's kind of the, the pivotal yeah. decision-making thing there, whether we use that that money as a kind of a, a seed to build a new building with the, the premise of our old building isn't really suitable for dealing with a pandemic. In order to do this, we either have to renovate which is not cost effective or build new um, or or on the yeah. flip side, using the money to renovate the building because the space isn't suitable to deal with a pandemic. And being being a slight pessimist here, I don't think this is the the last one of these that we're going to have to deal with. No. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's five years from now or hopefully something like 50 years from now, this is not going to be the only time that this problem presents itself. So we as a board need to decide the best path forward, not only for the short term, the immediate, but for longevity's sake, so that we don't have a board sitting here decades from now dealing with the same problem we are. Okay, uh, if we don't have anything more on that, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the uh, removal of chemicals. Three men from Elk Environmental worked for approximately three and three quarters hours to pack up the chemicals in the garage on Friday, July 2nd. Uh, they will be coming back at a later date to do the full removal of the chemicals. Uh, the supervisors had given the secretary permission to sign the uh, generator authorization letter. Uh, so at this point, I think we're just waiting for ELP to come back and do the, the final collection of those things, uh, which is, in my opinion, a very good thing. That is a problem that has been here for ages. Every, if you went back and looked, all of the barrels that were deteriorating and all that stuff is now in plastic barrels yeah um, everything's labeled yep. um, yeah it's it's ready for pickup nothing's it's, it's glowing though what nothing's, nothing's glowing, glowing. No. <laughs> um no if nothing else the immediate threat of like that barrel rusting through and spilling 55 gallons of god knows what yeah. everywhere we yeah. don't have that concern exactly. anymore so that's exactly. there's at least that and then hopefully in the near future we'll maybe have to reach out and see when they're planning on doing it yeah um but all of that will be gone that we'll have the space ask, back do we know when they're coming uh, I don't think they've set a date no, yet, but set a date. if we don't hear anything soon, because it's been just shy of a month yeah. at this point, mm -hmm. um, if we don't hear from something soon, we'll give them a call back and see if they have a date yeah. for that. Okay. And this generator authorization letter was, he said, if, if we sign that, they would have had to sign paperwork for every single barrel, every single paint can, every single whatever. But by signing this, it gives them permission to just like do the paperwork. The, yeah, like one sheet of paper. So that was yeah, that's, just a back. That's simple. That's good. I like simple. Yeah. There's nothing else stored in this building. Is it upstairs or basement? No. No. No, we no, got the basement is just the furnace that was disconnected. Yeah, unless there's something hiding particularly then, well somewhere else, we got all everything rounded yeah, up and that I love. I mean the salt, the water conditioner thing is in the basement. But yeah. Speaking of which, we're going to need salt again. Okay. Does it take pellets or crystals? Do you know? Um, well, I mean, Dave and Butch can go if yeah. they went before. It just can that be set for how many times it regenerates? If it's a new enough one, yes. Like I have mine scheduled to do that like once a week. Because it for months, Butch went down every month and it didn't take any salt. And then he went, he hadn't gone down for maybe two months. Mm -hmm. And then he went down the other week and he's like, the salt's gone. Maybe we're, like if we lost power, maybe something got scrambled and it's trying okay, to do it too often. Okay. Because AA is not here. Yeah. So like nobody's really using a lot of water. Yeah. You know, I, I just, it's a little odd to me. That's why I didn't know if that can be read. Yeah. If it's, if it's set how often it regenerates. If it's a new enough one, you can program it. Okay. Um, I don't know how new it is. I'll have to take a look and see. Um, All right. But yeah, it, it shouldn't be chewing through salt that fast, especially with how little water we use here. Yeah, it's pretty much me it, it's pretty much you just during the day. Person going to the bathroom. You yeah, know. yeah, that that shouldn't be like it shouldn't have to recharge. Yeah, really, all that often. Yeah, so I'll I'll, I'll anyway. try to find some time to take okay. a look at that. All right. Um, 
Next up is the radio for the EMC, the cost of $5,200 and the signing of the Berks County Radio Management User Agreement and System User Agreement were approved at prior meetings. Uh, I signed the notice to proceed letter for Radio Maintenance Incorporate, uh, Incorporated, Kutztown Road, Reading. Um, we just need to ratify this with a motion. Um, seeing as this is just kind of a housekeeping item, I'm not opposed to just doing that now rather than a Thursday night meeting. Uh, so I'll make a motion to ratify the action of signing the radio maintenance uh, and notice to proceed. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Okay, motion carried. Next item on the agenda is the 979 William Penn Boulevard uh, road and house flooding situation. Uh, I was out with Jim McCarthy to look at both properties. Uh, he recommends that the pipe be cleaned out. Um, I think we had done this once before, but based on the amount of uh, sediment and runoff that has happened there, uh, could stand another cleaning. I was talking to Butch about that, and I think the best way to proceed with that would be to water jet the pipe, either us renting something or asking the fire company to come out with a hose, and to, to put a really rudimentary spin on it, just blasting high-pressure water through it to remove any sediment or debris that's lodged in that pipe. Um, the township right away only extends one foot past the end wall. I was correct originally that it is 15 feet uh, or 16 feet. Um, someone in the audience at the last meeting had specified that that is a 100 foot right of way, which is no. um, definitely not the case. And from what Jim McCarthy has indicated, uh, really not the case anywhere. There's maybe like one road or two roads anywhere in PA that have that. And they're typically ridiculously wide highways. Um, so if we do any sort of remediation work, which we're going to want to do, uh, we would need to get permission. And I'll talk to Andy about getting something written from the property owner about being able to take equipment or personnel onto their property to perform the work. During the last storm, yeah. <laughs> I left the office and I got caught in that. It was, it was pretty bad this past Friday. Um, what was the date? I just, I guess. Uh, was the, it was last Friday, the 19th, 16th, 16th. 16th. Was it? Yeah, it was the 16th. I'm looking at it now. All right, so Friday, uh, July 16th, we had uh, two quick storms. One was around 2 p.m. And I said, let me take a look at this property as I was coming down the road. And I, I sent the video to everyone. Mm -hmm. And you could see that on this, forgive me, I'm terrible with north, south, east. I think that's the, the east side would be going for a small storm. So, so this is the Weidenheimer property. Yeah. So you could clearly see that in front of that, the riprap and, and the short brick uh, concrete wall that they have there was just a pond. Mm -hmm. And then the water was coming up over the road. Mm -hmm. But you could also see on the Weidenheimer property that the water pools a little bit before their driveway, but it's almost like there's there's a waterway that comes, pours right down to the driveway where you can see the soil has eroded. I mean, I know uh, McCarthy was kind enough to give the Weidenheimer's recommendations about their property. There, there is, is still a problem with water pooling on the other side of the south road. South side. South, south side. Thank you. <laughs> south side of the road. There's still water a problem. Nine, that's great. South side is 976. Okay. So the north side is 979. Right, problems with the water ponding on the south side of the road and coming over the road. Mm. Um, and, and we are getting more violent storms, more intense rain, more volume of rain. Uh, but there's still an issue that I think the white timers can do, but I don't think it's going to mitigate what's going on with South Side. Yeah, I actually, because yeah. uh, I had talked to Butch about yeah. this, that he said there was still water collecting, very similar to what, yeah. your, what your pictures and videos yeah. showed. Um, McCarthy Engineering is going to go out and make sure that that swale and the retention is installed correctly. Because yeah. when we were out there, there were two gentlemen in bulldozers digging, yeah. um, and uh, there, were, there were some immediate concerns that Jim and the other engineer that was there had yeah. for like, are you doing this right? And they asked him a, a slew of questions to which the guy didn't really have answers for. One of them was like, did you put a clay core in, yeah. in the bank? And he was like, no, it's just dirt. Um, so they're actively aware of that. And one okay. of the reasons that it may not be draining correctly is they did not build it to design. Okay. So obviously, I think everybody here is in agreement. If you, build, if you don't build something right, it's not going to work gonna right. Work? Yeah. Um, so I'm keeping an eye on it whenever I'm yeah. driving down that picture. <coughs> Let's see. Do something. Did Thank anyone you. see further down William Penn Boulevard? There's this property that has this huge mound of soil that's mm -hmm. like right up. Like that's near. the Weiss property. Okay. Yeah. So a little bit further down as you're heading towards Wilmersdorf, there was just mud and water coming up over the road. 
And yeah. Part of the problem is there is there used to be grass along the side of the road. For some reason, they the farmer graded it, mm -hmm. and ever since then, it just washes. So there's actually I know this specifically because this happened on yeah. Canal Road. Is it is the farmer's responsibility to have that graded against the road bank, um, reseeded, or some sort of uh, like it's a hydrological like retention sort of thing, like one of the silt socks or something else. Uh, to keep mud from coming onto the road. Oh, no. If mud comes onto the road, it's actually their responsibility to remove the mud. So mm -hmm. let's, no, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if there's a long standing problem like that, like I don't necessarily drive that road super frequently. Um, let's say something to Jim and then Jim can go out and that's one of the things that he as the zoning officer can enforce against. Um, you need to either regrade this or seed it or put like the, that geotextile fabric on it to keep things from running off until the grass and other things can, can grow back in or like there's a ton of stuff that they can require to be done outside of the normal like planning cycle. That's a, a hazard condition rather than unfortunately with Weidenheimer property, it's, it's a nuisance condition from yeah. one property to the other, the road yeah. just happens to be through. Um, with that said, though, I think, and I'm, I'm in firm agreement of this because I've actually been out, like, not the most yeah. recent time, but when it was raining, um, it's kind of a comedy of errors. We have the, would be the north side property, the swale and the retention are going in. That was really just kind of unmitigated un runoff at that mm -hmm. point, that everything was being funneled into a spot and it was overtopping the road or going through that, that hose with such, or the, not the hose, excuse me, uh, the pipe with such velocity that it was like, putting your finger over a garden hose, which yeah. is why it was blasting straight into Weidenheimer's house. Um, now that that is slowing down the the, the actual am amount and volume or uh, speed and volume of water going to the pipe, that's one thing. Cleaning out the pipe and making sure that the pipe is able to drain correctly on the Weidenheimer side is the other thing. And that's gonna require us digging that out, straightening that head wall and putting in a, a essentially a basin of riprap so that any water that comes through the pipe is able to slowly exit settle and if there's any any accumulation where the groundwater it can't seep into the ground fast enough um it can then slowly go out onto the, the Weidenheimer property which is mm -hmm. then the third piece and we had talked to Kenny about this uh, Jim and I you can very clearly see the originally intended path for that water mm -hmm. it looks like whenever they put the well in the spoils from the well were just immediately deposited yep. next to it yep. And that's created a situation where the water can exit. It can go kind of a little bit of a C shape, but it has nowhere to complete the path, which goes around the back of their house, which then causes a bit of a ponding situation or in cases of really heavy rainfall, it forces the water basically straight towards their front door. Yeah. So the directive that we had given him in the letter that, that Jim wrote and yeah. everything was, it, it's not going to take a lot. We're not talking about a huge earth moving project. It's simply giving the, the water that original path you obviously don't want to put it straight into your well but digging it a little bit of a path that way it's able to naturally get around your house rather than spilling into your front door or backing up and then following that that eroded channel down the driveway so i'm i'm again not an engineer but i'm i'm pretty confident just from a basic understanding of physics that if all three of those things get addressed it's going to be mitigated to the point where it's either not going to be a problem at all, or it's only going to be a problem when we have excessively heavy rainfalls. Um, and that's, I, I certainly don't want to see anybody get flooded. Kenny, you, right. anybody, that's not a situation that you should have to deal with. Uh, but unfortunately, by the nature of how all the pieces that have created this situation click together, there's minimal that we can do. The minimal being that right, pipe. Right. And that's something we can absolutely do. I've had Butch go out and look at it. He had Ryan Allgaier go out and look at it. Um, Ryan seems to think that the pipe needs to be replaced, but from talking to Jim McCarthy, the way that pipe is put together, there's really no reason why we shouldn't be able to take uh, the existing head wall off of it because it's modular sort of in construction, straighten it and reapply it. Um, but whether that means me sending Butch and Kevin out with shovels or renting a backhoe or hiring Ryan Allgaier to do it because he has the equipment because we don't have a, a backhoe like that. Um, getting first permission from the Weidenheimers to be able to set up on their property because of the right of way differences. Uh, and then doing a little bit of exploratory surgery first to see if it's a situation where, okay, it is in fact just a head wall that needs to be straightened or, oh, wow, the pipe is cracked the whole yeah. way through and it has to be replaced. Um, if we have to go that route, I'm, I'm a, a, a big supporter of doing it if we have to do it to make things right. But I obviously don't want to spend money to rip the pipe out and replace the pipe if we don't have to. Yeah. 
Um, so I guess Tim, do you drive down that road? Well, yeah, you probably so you, drive down that road often. Pretty regularly. So, so next time there's a rain, you know what I'm talking about that the big mound of soil. Let's make sure we're taking pictures and we see where the runoff is, like further down the road too. Okay. So, because that's the other thing I was looking at, like, does the the issue start further down the road, bringing all the water down this way? And I didn't think it did because I, I saw the water. Coming. No, they're no, they're, they're uphill. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. uphill from yeah. that. What's turning down? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was something that I'm like, yeah, this is contributing to it. But mm -hmm. I didn't see that mm -hmm. with with the last rainstorm. Mm -hmm. But I think the other issue, I think the other the situation is another issue that we should address. Agreed. I completely yeah. agreed. Um, back on the driveway statement with the, the kind of oh, channel that's eroded yeah. there with them, one of the things that we could do, and this is a simple enough thing, um, is send Butch and a couple other people out, maybe get like a truckload of dirt, because I don't think we have enough soil here to be able to do this on our own. Um, have them go out and lay down it within our right of way, a little bit of extra soil, which is going to keep the water that is coming and trying to channel towards the driveway mm -hmm. from doing that. Um, trying to get it kind of funneled either around one side of the head wall or the other so that anything that comes down on that, I guess that'd be the east side, like the Wommelsdorf side, rather than collecting there and running and going down the driveway, we could kind of force it to, to collect, run, and then go into our preferred point of, of ingress for that water. Um, again, pretty simple. We're, we're talking maybe like 50, 60 bucks for the dirt, a little bit of time for the road crew, and then mm -hmm. sending them out with the grader as a follow-up. Mm -hmm. um, before we do that, though, I would like them to look at the head wall because I don't want to have them regrade everything and then have to right. dig it back up again. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll keep that moving. That isn't something, unfortunately, that, that happens overnight, but it is uh, in the motion. And like I said, I've had a conversation with Kenny. Uh, Jim McCarthy generated that letter and we had a couple of attachments from before. And, and this um, was emailed to them. Yes. The mailing one just went in the mail today because I Good. just didn't have a chance to get to the post office. Yeah, and we had promised them a physical copy, which is why I had asked to have it yeah. mailed. But uh, I emailed them the, the memo and the two inspection reports. Yeah. Bottom line is we're much like the first couple of times that they brought this up. There's only so much we can do. Right. But we're I'm personally speaking, I'm happy to, to do it. If it's a yeah, situation, yeah. especially when it comes to interaction with a, yeah. a piece of public property, like a road, if there's something we can do, let's do it. Yeah. Um, obviously some things are going to be simpler and cheaper than others, but yeah. if it's something as simple as sending the guys out for a couple hours with some shovels or a backhoe to straighten something, clean a pipe out, that's a no brainer. Right. And I guess the other point that, that I was thinking about too, it doesn't matter if the war is coming over the road or under the road. You know, it, it's there's still like a water flow issue, but you can mm -hmm. see the the issue really does start on the yeah, 76 address. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's yeah. That's a lot. that's kind of the root. Yeah. The root of the problem, yeah. and it's it, that's if, if I had to break it by percentage, that's probably 75 percent of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. The pipe and Kenny Weidenheimer's property are probably like 12 and a half percent each, um, but. You have to because even when that was a cornfield on the south side, yeah, this water was still coming. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna have runoff. That's yeah. the reason that yeah. that pipe yeah. is there because yeah. if you take away that pipe, the water still has to go somewhere. Right. So it's either gonna overtop the road right. or it's gonna erode out that. I guess that'd be the the north bank or whatever it is, but it's gonna erode that side out, and then you may solve the problem for Kenny and then create a problem for Jacob Weiss right. where he's got massive amounts of runoff like basically right in his front door then. Mm -hmm. So the goal here is to fix it or mitigate it to the point where it's not a problem anymore without creating other problems as a result. Yep. So we'll, uh, we'll keep driving at that, but uh, I think we're, it took a while to get here, but I think we're getting to the point and the big, the linchpin aspect of fixing that problem is that other property, getting the swale in there right, getting that retention area in right and really capturing the runoff from that and allowing it to either seep into the ground slowly or spill over into that pipe gently. Mm -hmm. Okay, we already did the next item on the agenda, so we'll skip that. Uh, the Western Berks Joint Planning Commission, uh, we are now a member of that, and per Andy, we need to appoint two supervisors as members. Uh, their July 15th meeting was canceled. The Robazonia Borough would like to discuss the definition of convenience store to allow for the sale of fuel as a customary accessory without having to be defined as a service station. Um, my personal suggestion, I, I actually kind of enjoy planning commission stuff, um, would be uh, Jim and myself, since you're- I don't you're, have that. I was gonna say, you don't, I figured you don't have the time and you already have a lot going on oh, with on. the other stuff, like the right to know and the, the finances. Um, that Jim and I could very easily serve in that capacity. Um, we might and thank, make the motion to 
Oh yeah, yeah, I'm getting there, getting there. Thank you. So, okay. um, that uh, I figure from a bandwidth standpoint, <laughs> yeah, uh, from a bandwidth standpoint, Jim and I are probably going to be the best suited for that because I can always like if I have to schedule time off, I can schedule time off for a meeting. And thankfully, they don't meet every month. It's as needed. So, um, I think she said they don't meet in the summer. Winter. I thought that was just the uh, as needed There's sort of deal. Period of time where they don't meet. I think she said each municipality oh. hosts the meetings for two years. Yeah, I think and you're it's right. Rotated. If I remember correctly, uh, because of the whole joint zoning thing, um, there was a period around Christmas time. Is that when? It yeah, is? I think it might have been like November through January or something like that meetings. that they didn't. I, either way, yeah, it's not super often, which makes it even easier yeah. for us to attend. Uh, but I'll I mean, make. I think this one was probably only scheduled because Ravazzoni was to talk about something. Yeah. So, yeah. And I emailed her to find out if it was rescheduled, and she didn't get back to me yet. So okay. as soon as I find out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also going to set up a rule to make sure that it doesn't move it to spam like it did the last time, and then just forward it out to the Marion Township office and the supervisor's distribution well, she list. She said she put. So apparently, Lisa put Marion Township on her on the original list of emails but it just, the other secretary or four time secretary whatever she is um she used lisa's original original like list yeah. and it happens so she said it's taken care of you know yeah so. i'll set up a safety net though too just yeah. in case yeah um that way we don't have jim <laughs> show what? up and have him not be there like, what i didn't know there was a meeting tonight yeah <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't or even I didn't know the meeting was canceled. I didn't even know there was a meeting. He's like, I it, mine went right to spam. So it was just like what okay. I thought that was like yeah. in a week or two. Like I thought it was like the, the 23rd or something like that. And when you were like, no, there was an email, and I'm like, oh man, I gotta I gotta dig around and try and find this now. Well, but, the, you know, Lisa when I called Lisa, she said I sent it to Peter. Yeah. You know, and she's like, and you know, that's my whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll get it ironed out but i yeah, i'll exactly. make a motion to appoint uh, jim brooks and peter mccarthy as the two supervisor members of the western burks joint planning commission second peter and jim thank you jim irene second roll call peter aye irene aye jim aye okay i'll let okay. her now i'll let everybody know thank you sue Next item on the agenda is the zoning hearing board vacancy. Uh, attorney Keith Mooney recommends that we appoint a fifth member to prevent any issues with the votes. Uh, Anthony Martin had been interested last year. If he is still interested, let's maybe reach out to him and find out. I don't have any problem appointing an interested. I think you, I think you had talked to him. Um, talk to I him? recall talking to him at one point about that. So if, let's just touch base with him and see if he is interested. Let's appoint him. Because I think okay. the like we, we had kind of a, a weird state where we didn't know 100% at the, the January, like the reappointment meeting, which is why it didn't happen. But Well, you appointed Dave, but I think you talked to both of them. Uh, I want to recall, I want to say that I recall talking to both of them. I, I'm pretty sure. But you either way, let's touch base with them again, see if the interest is still there okay. and appoint it. If there's somebody who's willing to, to take a vacancy and they're even somewhat qualified for it, let's, let's get them, let's get them in the seat. You know anybody um, Stonecroft that's interested, Jim? Say again? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, one other quick thing, I'll use that as a segue rather than waiting until um, comment time. Uh, Luke Troutman actually sent me a message. Uh, I was just going to bring that up. And uh, he has a CDL and uh, he drives bus and does like crop farming and things like that, runs cattle trailers. Uh, he's interested in serving on the road crew. So he's uh, somebody who would have a, a lot of experience doing the kind of things that we would need to have done. And to put it lightly, would have the availability in the event of a snowstorm because he wouldn't be driving a bus or running props well, or anything he, like when that. When he stepped in the other day, he said he could help us in between morning run and afternoon run. Yeah. You know, because I said that's our problem is we don't have people during the day other than Butch, and Butch doesn't have a CDL. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But I said he had to talk yeah, to you. Yeah, he talked I said, to me. I prefer that he talked to all three of you. Yeah. Um, he unfortunately you know, couldn't come to the meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he had a conflict this morning because that was actually my right. my immediate ask was to come talk to us at the 9 a.m. 9 a.m. supervisor workshop. And meeting. I had asked him too, and I said, "Can you come to the Thursday night meeting?" And he said, "No, it's Eleven and Fair Week, so yeah, he couldn't be here." Either way, just from my my knowledge of Luke, just in general, and just the stuff that he told me that he has qualification wise, I think we should add him to the road crew like right away. Oh, so. Absolutely. Um, so yeah. I'll I'll make a motion to. Uh, Appoint Luke Troutman to the road crew. 
second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. All right, I'll make sure he gets a payroll packet. Excellent. And then if we can keep that as just a like a note item on the agenda for Thursday night, that way I just let everybody know. Chances are I'll remember, but a reminder is yeah. appreciated. Okay. Um, just so we can let people know that there's a, a new addition to the road crew. Um, somebody had brought up like, is there some sort of thing with like unemployment compensation where we have to stay under a certain number of people? If there is a limit on that, I don't. I don't think it's, we're not getting anywhere near that. And I, I'm not immediately aware of like UC um, uh, rules. So I, I don't think we really have a concern there, but the more the more people we can get on the road crew, in my opinion, the better, uh, simply so that like, if it snows, we don't have to have people running 16 hour shifts like we've had to do in a couple of years prior. Um, Cause there's, in some cases, when you have like a heavy snowfall, there's too much to do and not enough people to go around mm -hmm. to do it. So. I think it, it it wouldn't because we're part time and it's almost like seasonal. yeah I was just yeah, gonna say, it, gonna it, say it, we're more treated like seasonal work so I don't think we have any issues yeah. with that yeah I yeah my initial like I said I haven't looked at like yeah. the actual code for it but my initial surmise of that was around the same as it's it's not if there is a limit we're not anywhere near it and we're probably yeah. not even applicable for it because of the nature of how we are um, but if anybody uh, listening or in the room here if you know somebody who is uh, qualified or interested in serving on the road crew uh there's plenty of stuff to do whether it's the winter time or the summer there's tree trimming and mowing and cold patching and uh situations where where we go to do a culvert you don't necessarily have to be somebody that knows how to run a backhoe or anything like that you can be helping to move things or shovel or or tamp things down um, or yeah or flagging uh, placing cones marking a, a road for a cutout there's any number of things that we can do. So if you know anybody who's interested in that sort of thing or is able to help out, even if it's not in a, a super uh, heavy lifting capacity, the more hands, the better. We're a small township and everybody everybody that can help is, is appreciated because it really makes the workload easier for those who are involved. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Topahawken Police Services. Uh, effective January 1st, 2020, they will be raising their rate from 50,000. Correct, that's 2022. 2022, thank you. Oh. Uh, thank you, thank you. I'm terrible with dates. So yes, okay. effective January 1st, 2022, uh, they will be raising their rate from $50,160.52 to $54,246.96. Uh, this is an increase of $300, uh, $340.54 per month or $2,086.44 for the year. Uh, so we really just need to be cognizant of that when we go to set the budget for next year so that we have the correct amount and not the historic amount. They're usually pretty good about sending yes. follow-up letters at the end of the year too. Yeah, yeah. I'll make sure, I'll give you a copy of this yes. for your file. Excellent. Yes, I have that budget uh, agenda file on top of the desk okay. too. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, just as an aside, they always increase it by about 4% every yeah. year. Yeah, and yeah. so that's, that's pretty standard. Yeah. We've seen with very few things, some things haven't increased fees, but yes. generally it's about a three four. to 4% yeah. over the over annuum. Um, they are also running out of parking tickets. Uh, this is something that they had brought up before. Uh, we asked them if this was a part of the cost for the police coverage that we pay. Uh, to put it shortly, the answer is no, it's not really. Uh, however, they have some tickets uh, that they'll use from Tulpa Hawkins queue of, of things. And whenever they run out and have to be reordered, they then just split the cost between the two townships. So can I ask you a question sure. about police stuff? So yesterday, as we were driving down 422, uh, we noticed uh, Kirshner, I can't remember the other gentleman's. Uh, uh, Chad's Chad the bigger I was gonna say guy, Chad. and Brian is the... I think it was Brian. Mm -hmm. They're setting up markings on the road and we're like, okay, so they're doing some for speed. And so um, we just got into a conversation. Can we do something for automatic tickets? That is dicey. And I think in the way PA works, and I haven't looked at yeah. it in a bit, um, things like the, the radar signs right. are not admissible. Like there's, right. a, yeah. Right. Um, but if there's a automatic ticket thing that says, you know, your, your speed is being monitored. You will be, you know, if it's set to a ticket at a certain speed. I mean, is this just a question for Andy? I, I, would, costs and all this I, would, I would run it yeah. by Andy. I would also yeah. run it by the police because I know there are yeah. rules, like local cops right now. There's um, 
there's actually a bill going through to be able to enable them to use radar. Mm -hmm. um, they're not even right now allowed to use radar. They have to manually clock. Mm -hmm. um, and that's and, what they were doing. Yeah. It's and just, in addition to that, like yeah. our speed sign, we can't use that for enforcement for a couple of reasons. One, right. it's radar. Right. And two, it's not, jurisdictionally, it's not the police. Right. Um, even if the police set up a sign like that, saying. it's a situation yeah. where they're not allowed to use radar. And again, not a lawyer here. When you take it to court, those things have to be calibrated pretty regularly for accuracy. Yeah. So if you haven't yeah. done any of those things, your whole right. automatic right. thing kind of falls apart. It's just through Stouchburg is so frustrating. It would be. I, I just, I can't stand it when people just speed through town, you know? It would probably be best to do two things. And I'm, this is something I, I bring up occasionally. Yeah. I, I would still yeah. love to have McCarthy or, or whoever do the line of sights and the the studies around warrants for putting stop signs in. I'm not sure if church would do it. That would, In my mind, that would be the perfect spot, but I don't know if it's going to meet the criteria. Mm -hmm. um, the intersection of Water Street and Main, probably actually going to be the spot because when you, when you turn out there, that left hand, you have basically zero line of sight. Mm -hmm. Even if you didn't have cars parking on that entire mm -hmm. block, just the mm -hmm. shape of the road is bad. Mm -hmm. And I know that's one of the stop sign requirements for that warrant mm -hmm. is obstructed view. Right. So having a stop sign there, unless people just blow the stop sign, right. um, that's going to force people to, to slow down a bit. The other thing that we have in motion, and um, thank you for the reminder on that, was line painting, like yeah, A1 yeah, line I'm painting. Just say that too. Um, I need to call him. We need to call them and see when they're doing that, because I, I actually want to take a day off of work and go out with them and make sure they're painting the things that I want them to mm -hmm. paint in the way that I want them to paint it. But uh, putting in the outside the lane markers, the white lines to visually narrow the road yeah. is going to help tremendously with that. Unless somebody's going out of their way to speed, you get that sort of uh, what I'll call kind of highway hypnosis on that. Yeah. It's a big, wide open boulevard, isn't tight. And it's a, isn't tight. It's a, a wonderfully straight shot. So like your, your natural inclination is to just kind of speed a little more. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not paying attention to it, 25 can turn into 45. Oh yeah, um, it does. It's so I think a combination of things, the lines are going to help. Uh, if we put a stop sign in, uh, yes, people kind of complain about a stop sign being there because like, yes, cars have to stop in front of your house. But honestly, I grew up in the city. There were stop signs on every block. It's not that bad. <laughs> it, it's a safety issue anymore. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. It, just, it, it just troubles me so much. You know, I'm driving speed when people just zipping by me going in the opposite yeah. direction. It's just The other un unintended positive consequences, there are tractor trailers that cut yeah. through there. If you have a stop sign there, they may be less inclined after the first couple of times to do that because they now have to come to a stop. Whereas yeah. if they just stay on 422, it's it's a kind of an unbroken stride for them. Right. But and we'd have the proper signage saying stop sign, sign ahead. And it, yeah. yeah. So if we can get that study done and get the lines in, get, maybe get a stop sign in one, if not two places, I think that's again, going to deliver much better results unless you have people that are just going to go, nope, I'm not stopping at the stop sign. I'm doing 90 down Main Street. You could have that still happen. There's no way to prevent that. But anybody who is paying attention and is and is abiding by posted laws, it's, it's going to really kind of break things up and keep people at a, a more reasonable speed. Okay, next item on the agenda is the semi- Quincentennial for the Commonwealth of PA in the USA. Uh, July 4th, 2026 is the date for that. Uh, we received an email from Paul Jansen from CELG. Um, they would like all municipalities in Berks County to pass a resolution supporting the PA Commission for the US semi-quincentennial. Um, admittedly, I don't know really what they're asking or what they're looking to do with I that. I don't know either. I don't really inherently have a problem with some sort of celebration around that, but I'd be kind of curious to know what their itinerary is before we sign any sort of resolution or make any sort of motion around that. Um, certainly. Um, I'd imagine we don't have to necessarily do this right this second, considering it's 2026. Um, but I'd be very curious to maybe reply back to uh, Mr. Jansen and find out what they're looking to do, if there's going to be any sort of celebration or if we're going to be maybe like kind of like closing a road and having a parade or well, according to really the resolution what, they want us it's, it's, to it's, sign, it says um, it's kind of vague because it's just a uh, recognized programs. programs, projects, and events over the next five years by inspiring future leaders and celebrating all Pennsylvania's 
Pennsylvanians contributions to the nation over the last 250 years. I don't know, it doesn't really. Yeah, that's, that's. Adopt America's 250 PA's four pillars of epic, educate, preserve, innovate, and celebrate. It, it doesn't really say anything else. Yeah. And I, I don't know if you could read this screenshot that they sent. I, I didn't really look at it because it was too small for me to read. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's a what it is. that's a program overview. Okay. So anytime you see something like that, it's usually the the initial planning document. It's uh, think of it more as the the overarching policy before you start trying to implement it through like procedure. Um, these are the 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 things we want to focus on, like educating people. Okay. Yes, that's a pretty broad statement, and then you usually kind of boil that down into we're going to be doing. Um, seminars at like the Burks Ag Center or Marion Township's going to hold one for young leaders in, in Burks. Um, that's usually the thing that then draws out some more of the program. Um, oh. What I'm not seeing is the program. I'm seeing the high level. The, this is what we want to accomplish, but not what they're doing to accomplish it. Um, and before we like agree to anything lock, stock and barrel, I'm more curious what the ask is. Because again, I'm, I'm in favor of this sort of thing. I like this sort of stuff, but I want to know what we're signing up for before we sign up. Yeah, it's it's not real clear. Maybe Andy knows something more. Yeah, it's, or honestly speaking, maybe they don't have a lot of information out. They're hoping people will buy in and then kind of more to come sort of sort of thing. But it, seeing as it's stuff happening over the next five years, if we don't move on it right this second, I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. Yeah. Much like the ARP money, we have some time to, I think, to kind of ruminate yeah, on it. It doesn't say they want it by a cutoff date. So. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Yeah, so I, I would I would say let's see if we can get some more information, whether it's through Andy or through uh, Paul Jansen, okay, and go from there. Like I said, like the idea, but I want to make sure that we're not <laughs> signing up for something that we might regret. Yeah, um, I remember nineteen seventy six. Next up on the agenda is the PSAT's annual business meeting and centennial celebration dinner. This is being held on October fourteenth and fifteenth at the Hershey Lodge. Uh, registration is required for both. Uh, cost for the business meetings is $30 online, which will include the continental breakfast and hot lunch. Celebration dinner costs $100 per person. Um, it doesn't have a cutoff date. It just says registration will be opening up August 2nd. I couldn't find a cutoff date anywhere, but you do need to register. So you need to let me know if you want to go. I personally don't want to go. Yeah, I'm just throwing that out there. I'm I mean, not, I'm not super I, interested. I was appointed the voting delegate. So you'd have to, if somebody wants to go to the meeting, you'd have to reappoint another voting delegate uh, if you want to vote. Um, yeah. But I mean, uh, just let me know if you want to go. Yeah, okay. we Will do. I'm not particularly interested. And um, I'm also not particularly interested in spending $100 for a dinner right. of my own money or the taxpayer's money. And I do um, believe that they, because the... Um, convention they call it a conference because that was canceled again this year because of covid that's why they're having this meeting mm -hmm. and dinner because normally this meeting is held during the conference yeah so yeah and, and plus it's their anniversary so it's their anniversary year too so yeah anyway just let me know if you want to go okay we'll do thank you sir okay okay next up is the property maintenance issues uh Having a rental inspection ordinance would allow us to inspect rental properties every other year. Uh, Andy did supply a copy of Richland's ordinance that uh, I've not gotten a chance to read through in earnest, but uh, as a, a general premise, I don't think it's a terribly bad idea for rental properties that are generating revenue mm -hmm. to, uh, to be inspected. So we don't have a situation where we have a, a slumlord in, mm -hmm. in the township. Um, and I can tell you from Lomel Storfs, um, which is very similar to Richland's. Um, they require a yearly fee be paid, um, but it's only inspected every other year. Okay, so we'd have to figure out because we we obviously don't want to. This, is, this shouldn't be a revenue generating thing for us, but so we want to make it so that the cost of the inspection semi or okay. biannually yeah, would right. be paid out, mm -hmm. kind of pro rata, one year at a time. Mm -hmm. um, but really, other than fit, figuring out the nuts and bolts to make sure that it's mm -hmm. fair and we're not overreaching in any capacity, I, I'm not opposed to it because it's something we then kind of very similar to the IPMC we have right. in our toolbox mm -hmm. where we can help people. Because um, mm -hmm. right now, like I'll use the, the tuck me in as an unfortunate example. 
there's not a lot of things that we can do. We're very limited in the power that we can exert to help people when there is a problem. And there's a lot of things that we have to go through very prescriptive steps in order to even enact those limited powers. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's look that over. I will make it a, a, a mission this week for me to do that in advance of Thursday's meeting so that we can mm -hmm. discuss at further, but. And I can tell you from Wilmersdorf's also that, um, they come in, make sure there's um, smoke detectors, mm -hmm. radon detectors, um, you know, basically check the plumbing to make sure it's right. And you don't have flush the toilets and... to make sure they don't leak and like that. It's mm -hmm. all safety issues, really. Yeah. Right. yeah, this is we're not we're not going into the realm of like homeowners association where like all no. your rental properties no. have to be no. painted the same color no. uh, or anything like it's that. This is <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're not having a situation where people are going to electrocute themselves on outlets or yeah, there's right. mold or the, there's the, a structural deficiency with the building where oh your stairs are going to fall down. Right. That right. sort of thing I think right. is again common sense things that we right now don't have a mechanism to, to act on. Right. So, so there's, there's a caveat to that. And I had sent that follow-up email to Andy. Mm -hmm. We run into a problem with Airbnbs. Now I came across an article about Airbnbs in Pennsylvania and there was something a little bit off about it. And Andy responded to the email of one of his counterparts who was working on that. So the problem is if we apply this kind of a ordinance, how is it going to apply for Airbnb or is there a time frame? That's something that Andy's going to have to figure out because Airbnb is used as a rental. I, I was going to say, do we have a requirement to register rental properties if you're a landlord right. in the I township? I had several phone calls about yep. Airbnbs and I contacted McCarthy Engineering and Jim just said, have them fill out a zoning permit and they have to be very specific on what they're providing like how many beds, how many people are going to be in the house, how many parking spaces you have, what you're going to feed them or what they can eat. Or like it, he said, be very specific, mm -hmm. but then that person never filled anything out. Yeah. And so I, that's, I've had two inquiries. Yeah. So this, this yeah. actually, this is a, thank you yeah. for doing that. That kind of sparked a thought in my mind is even if we have the rental ordinance in, we don't really have an, an overarching list of what the rental properties are right. in our township in order to apply this. So that's that's going to be something that if we put the ordinance in. And I, I um, think that's on this ordinance that you have to. We have to catalog. Well, it, you have a time period. I mean, read this. It's like you have a time period. Once you start renting out your prop, your house, you have a time period to notify the township and yeah. like that kind of thing. But read, read this. It's kind yeah. of in And there. one of the things that I'll use myself kind of <clears throat> selfishly as an example here, I own the property immediately next to me and my grandfather lives in it. If anything, I, I lose money on that. It's not like I get, I get rent paid. We need to make sure that, because I think I'm not alone in this. There's plenty of house or properties in the area, I shouldn't say house, but that have like an in-law house or something mm -hmm. like that. We need to make sure our definition of rental property is fairly airtight. The, we don't want to have unintended consequences for people where it's like, okay, you own a second house or you, you have a, a, an in-laws quarters on your home. Mm -hmm you're obviously not making money on that. You're not charging rent. You're not doing anything mm -hmm. with it. Um, if you started charging rent, that would be different, but we need to make sure the criteria for that is pretty targeted for like the tuck me ins, or if you have a, a, a set of like, a, I don't even know what it would be called, but like the, the attached homes right at the, the triangle there on main street and canal, um, things that are a, essentially a business. It's a revenue generating right. property where people live. Mm -hmm. Um, we want to make sure that we're, we're pretty resolute on that. Plus the tuck me in is technically a hotel. Yes. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. Technically. Yes. Yeah, so it, it's a definition of rental property, but you know, again, like having to have foresight, Airbnb is a newer concept. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, so trying to think of, of usage of a property that is not personal residence, et cetera, et cetera, you know, so, yeah. so we, we need Andy's input. Yeah, we need, we absolutely need Andy's yeah. input. And the only thing yeah. that immediately jumped to mind as I was yeah. thinking about this one day was we could kind of like the same fashion as zoning permit. Like if you want to be a landlord, if you have rental properties, you have to submit essentially a permit. It'd be really, really a nominal fee. Like you give us 20 bucks mm -hmm. to be on file for yeah. renting out a property, but get a list. And if you're going to do something like an Airbnb, yes, yeah, so you can still be zoned like residential. Mm -hmm. You would just submit the the, the application for a permit and you just say that this isn't a full-time rental it's airbnb um that sort of thing that way we have record of it 
We can have Jim McCarthy review it, very similar to what he would do with the zoning application, but we could start to very relatively easily and quickly build a list and accommodate, because it may not be Airbnb in the future, maybe something else, maybe something that we have no idea of, right? but we have kind of a generalized mechanism for, for capturing, okay, these are the properties that people are using, residential properties that people are using as a rental. They're generating income from letting somebody live here, even if it's temporarily for, for a fee. I'd also like to see us strengthen our property maintenance service so that we don't have people like we have now that ignore us. And then when we do take them to the magistrate, they pay a small fine yeah. and it goes away until we notify them again. Yeah. There's got to be something put in well, there, there that we can, there is. So, we yeah. can go after them a little I, quicker and increase fines and make lives a little miserable so that they listen to us. For, for good, bad, or indifferent, I tend to err on the side of being more lenient generally with things. Um, but there are some things that can be built into the IPMC. For example, I think like the maximum fine amount is like 500 bucks. Um, you could increase that. Not everything has to be the maximum. That's just the potential. Right. Um, the reason we set it low is we didn't originally the board as discussed, didn't want to see a situation where somebody gets an offense feud for the neighbor and then just hammers them on some minute point of the IPMC. Um, but there are things that we can put in there where if it is a repeat occurrence, if like you can build that in, it's just not in there right now, where if you have three violations of the same thing over the span of whatever amount of time, you can have a much higher fine amount. That's things that we just need to bounce off of Andy in terms of the correct right. wording yeah. for it. But yes, there are things that, again, we just have to decide as a board and put the tool in our toolbox that's going to be very specific, do, it, it, do exactly what we want it to do ideally without the unintended consequence of causing a, a, a really a, another problem somewhere else for somebody where somebody just is like, I really hate that your fence is one inch too tall, um, that sort of thing. Um, so I'm not opposed to it. We I, just think, have to. I don't know if you can even put in there specifically, you can't turn your property into a junket. No, I mean, that's, that's actually one of I the mean, things in there. Is like one the, of these properties is, we all know who it is, but yeah. He's adding junk instead oh, of instead of morning. cleaning it up. Yeah, yeah. So I know he paid a fine, but it's, it's, it, it just, wasn't it's enough just, to get his it's attention. It's just going to keep happening. At yeah. some point, the IPMC, and we could just adjust the time frame and the occurrences yeah. in which we get there. But at some point, there will come a point where we, as a board, would have to discuss if we're going to remediate the problem and bill for it. Um, that's eventually within our purview to do. We obviously don't want to go to that point too early because that's really kind of draconian, but that is already in the mix of things. Adjusting maybe when we get to invoke that might be prudent, but again, we have to temper that with, yes, it's a problem right now. It's annoying. It's irritating, but we don't want to necessarily tighten it so hard that we can address this one problem right here and now, but then have that be something that somebody right. can abuse later. Um, so again... I agree with you. I think it, I'm certainly open to discussion on it. And I think if there's something that it really, whether it's the IPMC or anything else, if there's something that we need to either revisit as a board or in the case of the rental agreement, visit for the first time and talk about, um, if it improves the quality of life as a whole, I'm for it. If it makes people's lives Good. easier and better, I'm all for it. But we want to make sure that we don't, again, like I said, have the unintended consequence of solving one problem and creating three more. I mean, this is even affecting the house now, the garage. Well, it's been the garage. I noticed the garage door the is garage like door's off. broken. It's, it's off track. It, it's just, it's the, it's the most unsightly property in this whole township. That you yeah. can't help but driving by. Yeah. As yeah. I say, un, unsightly being one thing, because like, Beauty is in the, the eye of right. the beholder. The bottom line is, uh, through your own personal observation, it's harboring rodents. It's 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 excessive. Uh, there's going to be times, especially when like maybe you're moving something or cleaning out a garage or something, you might have some stuff. Clutter clutter is a fact of life. It comes and goes. When you have that clutter that has collected and, and uh, accumulated to such a scale that it's the majority of the property that's that's a problem and that's yeah. the whole point of the ipmc is to address things like that ideally before they become a problem but unfortunately this particular problem predates the ipmc by probably 20 or 30 years 40 so 40 um <laughs> so we're, we're playing catch up on it right now and I, we've had i think great results in any of the other places that we've yes. invoked the ipmc 
Um, I'm not going to list specific properties, but there were a number that were particularly bad or some worse than others um, that through a, a gentle administration of it, they've been corrected or in the process of being corrected with very satisfactory results. It's really just this one outlier that is a continued and habitual problem. No, two. <laughs> two. Yeah, go ahead, Sue. Two. There's two of them. So it's two. Um, well, we've the, had the, some where that craft have sent letters and given them a whatever time frame and the, the other cleaned it up. You the know, other one inspection, it was cleaned up. The other one is making it, progress. Is making progress. <laughs> and that's the, the original directive that I had given craft, even when the board was different, was be fair about this. Give mm -hmm. people the benefit of the doubt. If mm -hmm. if you go out and you see noticeable progress, mm -hmm. go back out a week later and see if they're continuing, keeping up the, the momentum on it. If there's a little bit of a stagnant period, it could be they went on vacation or there was a health problem or whatever, give them the benefit of the doubt. But if you notice it start to just kind of languish or backslide, get engaged again, send another letter, make sure that we keep, keep things moving. Really at the end of the day, we're not interested in the fine. We're interested in solving the problem. Yes. So if we can do that without having to, to penalize people and can be, um, I'll use a slightly engendered term, but be gentlemanly about it or civil about it, um, if we can do that, let's do that. We're all uh, ideally friends and neighbors here. Let's right. let's act like it. Right, because your property affects my property value. Precisely. Well, it's it's living together. Yeah, we're a I've community. Had, I've had new people in the development because they published that I was a supervisor. Then they also published the new people. So if I see one of them, I don't recognize them, I'll ask, are you one of the new people? You would be, su be so surprised to say, oh, yeah, I am. And... You know, I introduce myself, say, oh, you're the supervisor. Who owns that piece of property? <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know, I had to drive up there to go to the grocery store. And who owns that? That's the most unsightly thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Why aren't you doing something about that? I just met them. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And they're already complaining. Yeah. So we no. need to do something. And, and, and quite frankly, he does this just to irritate us. I don't know. I, I think so. Some I really do. just live that way. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think that in his case, it's. He lives that way, but he's also. Uh, I think I think it's kind of a mix. I think that's it. it's, that's he how it started out, but I think there's a certain level of uh, opposition now yeah. that there's. I think he enjoys putting junk on that property just to make other people angry, <laughs> and it's working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, let's let's uh, kind of homework for everybody. Let's review the Richland Borough Ordinance and give okay. that some serious thought around crafting that so that it's as targeted and specific to Marion Township as it can be. And like I said, address the need without creating potentially some other problems. Um, the next item on the agenda, and I believe that's the second to last item on the agenda, is we received a donation request from Helping Harvest. Um, I have no problem with that. Well, we now just, generally we budget items uh, at the, uh, or I yeah. should say we, make, we get donation requests uh, mostly at the end, end of, of the year. year. Yeah. In, because they know we're preparing our budget for the yeah. next year so this isn't this gave, i mean i'm just saying we gave them a donation you can hold this off until yep. the next donation period yeah can i say yeah um, but i just wanted to put it on because we got it um, yeah well, what i was gonna say is i know you guys, i know we I'm had saying. we had budgeted for that for this year and we've already done yep. so it's really just keeping it in mm -hmm. place for the next year because mm -hmm. of the things that we can donate to i think personally that's a good one mm -hmm. Um, I know, like, just, again, personally, we donate, like we have the chickens. Mm -hmm. If we have eggs, mm -hmm. we don't, we don't need in a week. We, we drive them out and we donate them. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I think it's a very good and noble yeah, thing. I was kind of surprised that we got this now because maybe they're just trying to get ahead of the game. Cause I know like budget be. season starts in the next couple of months. Soon, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that, I only but, put it on cause we got it. Yeah. Either way, really no action needed. Cause we had already, right. we already had them in the, the budget, but I'm, I'm all for sending them a donation again next year. Okay. I'll just, I'll put this, I'll make a folder, Irene. Yeah, no, there's a folder there, budget so items. Donation requests. I just put in the budget okay. item thing. Would, okay. Yeah, it's there. Okay. I'll keep it all together. All right. Okay. Uh, next item is the Act 537. Uh, the next step is the income study and getting a letter out to property owners about the pump out inspection schedule. Um, I did see the email from the new SEO. Um, I need to send over the uh, reconciled list. I need to make sure that I have 2021s rather than 2020. Uh, but the reconciled mm. list of properties and, and owners. And I've been trying, as we get um, transfers in, I've been trying to remember to put Adam. them on the new tax list. Sometimes I forget. 
Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So I'll, I'll work on making sure that that's valid and getting that over to him. Maybe it, if so, my other thinking is like, could you just, could we just address the letters to property owners? But of course, do Alan not, needs a database. Yeah, yeah. So he needs a database. And there's, there's another principal concern with that is if it's, let's say a rental property, okay. if we send that to property owner and it gets to the person living in the rental property rather than the actual owner, there's no guarantee well, that but they're there actually is a, there's, do a, it. there's a location address and a mailing address. Yeah. 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 That's, I, I had been working off of the way I did this was I, I did unique values only for the, uh, the mailing address, which is theoretically the property owner. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then did that for actual mailing addresses and just did a lookup. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of like data yeah. manipulation, but. I just need to make sure that I have 2021 rather than 2020. And that, okay. that really is the list that he needs yeah. in order to move forward on yeah. that. Um, that will be good. Cause then we can start going through the pump outs and everything. Um, McCarthy engineering is rerunning the cost estimate calculations around the act 537 plan as it exists and has been unfortunately previously approved. Uh, Colleen Terry from econ partners will be helping us with the income study, uh, hopefully in the next couple of months. And our SEO will help us fine tune the letter that we want to send out to property owners as a, a kind of opening salvo for, Hey, this is a thing. We're a little behind on the original schedule for the ordinance, but, um, COVID. honestly speaking with COVID and everything else that happened, um, it's really kind of to be understood. Um, yes, it'd be good to have the data already, but it's not the end of the world. So we have to start looking at funding according to the original schedule. Yes. And that was the other thing is I need to go and look at ratification date versus the schedule. Um, I believe, believe offhandedly we had given, it was one of the few victories that I got with the other Peter and Franklin, um, was extending the funding period out to like 84 months. So it was like 72 or 84 months. I think um, it was three years. Was no, I think it was more than that. Um, I'll double check, but either way, that was, uh, we got it extended because originally I was like, there is, we have literally no time to react to this. If we can't find funding, we are up one particular creek without a paddle. Um, so I just need to see where we're at and kind of just chart it on a calendar for here are our milestones that we need to hit. Right now we're still, we're, I'm sure we're getting close to, to some in terms of wanting to figure out what we're doing. Um, but the big thing is make sure we don't, pass anything where we can be starting to be get fined on a daily basis. That's pr principal point number one. Yeah. But point number two is to arm ourselves with the good data around income study, uh, adjusted costs, uh, the pump out and inspection, because that those things are going to be what give us legs to stand on if we have to challenge this for any reason, uh, both either from a need or affordability standpoint. Um, just being optimistic about this, let's say we go through the, the entire pump out schedule and we find, oh, things are actually sunshine and roses. We had two, two things that weren't remediation or capable of remediation. Um, that gives us the ability to say, hey, from a cost standpoint, this doesn't make sense yet for us. Um, if we have to take that to court, again, not an attorney, but we're gonna be infinitely better having hard data and science to stand on to say, look, we, we don't disagree with you. If it's needed and we can afford it, we'll do it but it's not needed. And from an affordability standpoint, it is wildly outside of the ballpark. Like, cause you can chart the an efficiency curve. Here's how much it's going to cost us to maintain current. Here's how much it's going to cost us to implement an infrastructure project of this magnitude. We're, we're way over here. And for this to make financial sense, we need to be way over here. Um, without those things in, in the mix, it's mostly just us posturing saying we don't want to do this because we think right we think doesn't hold a lot of weight um so we just have to like i said make sure that we're, we're hitting milestones and the first couple of milestones are pretty basic and there are things that we can use multi-purpose the income study is going to do us a lot of favors for data it's also a requirement of the plan looking at grant funding is going to be good in the sense that it tells us affordability it also tells us uh, or it also doesn't tell us that uh, it also fits into the requirement of the Act 537 for a milestone. So a lot of the things that we're doing right now, we're not necessarily buying in 100% one way or the other. They're very general purpose. They're, to, to use the toolbox analogy again, they're tools that we have that we can use one way or the other. Do you, Sue, do you or Peter have like something uh, very brief as to what the schedule is so I could just post on that. It's actually, it's actually in the Act 537 plan. There's a, a page that has yeah, that. Um, just print it up and we get yeah. I, what I want to do is I want to pull that out 
Yeah. And either you're in like an eight and a half by 11 or maybe slightly yeah. larger than an eight and a half by 11, but list that and yeah. then put in a very easy to see sort of timeline yep. of like 2021, 2022, 2023, yep. and say like income study due, plan due, yep. installation started, um, and try to word it in such a way that people don't immediately make the knee-jerk reaction of like, nope, we're just locking in on sewer. Because yep. like bottom line is we're kind of stuck with how the, the, the previous couple members of the board right. voted. Um, we're still going to try and challenge this at, at whatever turn that we can to make sure that people don't get steamrolled on this. But right now, we unfortunately have a path that's been set before us that we have to progress down until we successfully challenge something or are successfully able to make a revision to the plan. Um, we have to make the best of a bad situation, I suppose, but uh, continue to try to be diligent about protecting people. Um, it's, so, it, well, would it benefit us to have a meeting with Cage and open up what's going well, on? It, Cage, it, it, Cage it, sort of it, isn't. Well, I know. Yeah, what, it, out. yeah they, they they sort of they kind of evaporated. Uh, uh, people are still active. We still get emails from Bob and things like that. Right. But the we interest is still there. But they're they're not kind of an organized cohesive thing anymore. Um, with that said, once we have the income study and everything, once we have those data points, I think it would be massively beneficial to have uh, like a town hall, a special meeting to get people in and present, okay, here's, here's the, the cold, hard facts of things. This is like open to discussion to a certain degree, but here's the situation that exists right now. Here's why, here's the, the pressures and the requisites that we're under from a regulatory standpoint, from a timeline standpoint. Here are the things that we're trying to do. Here are the things that we're doing. Here's what we're hoping the net result is. However, if that doesn't pan out being purely pragmatic here. If plan A doesn't work, plan B is this. This is how it's gonna go down. And here are some of the things that we can do to try to safeguard people. If we do have to put the sewer in, here's what we can do. If it ultimately comes to a lawsuit, which I know I, if we can avoid it, I'd like to avoid that. Yeah. Um, but here's what it comes down to. If we're being forced into this and it's gonna cost people $60,000 over a 20 year span, then we may want to actually pursue legal action and say that this is completely unfeasible. Um, if it's a situation where like, I'll, I'll cross my fingers and hope, but if it was a situation where we're able to get basically a hundred percent grant funding or such a small amount of a loan that it changes your, your monthly use by like $5 or something like that, that becomes a no brainer. There's almost really no legs to stand on it to challenge it. Because again, if you look at on, on a cost efficiency curve, it's actually going to be less money for people over a 20 year span to, to go to the sewer than it is to maintain an on lot system. Um, the, the, like I said, the problem that we have is we don't have a lot of that hard data. A lot of it is supposition. Even the stuff that's in the, the, the plan around proving contamination is uh, it's data, but it's really kind of subjective. It doesn't quantify what the contamination is. It's just a binary yes or no, was there contamination noted here? So we really need to have more data and then we need to, and this is, I think one of the biggest problems of this project going on is communication was not the ideal on that. Um, I think if people had been sat down, myself included, and been very well briefed on what some of the concerns were, what some of the options were, and, and I don't want to like throw stones and lay blame or anything like that. But I think if the prior board of supervisors had taken a look at this on a more holistic scale of, well, they're just going to force us to do it. If they had looked at it, the plan could have been written a little differently because the plan, not to beat a dead horse for the purposes of time here, but if the plan had been written slightly differently, it would still hit all of the regulatory check boxes of here is our long-term plan. Here's how we're doing things in the short term. Here's how we're doing things in the long, long run. You could write a plan that would be good for the next five years, uh, as, as good as it would be for the next 35 years. We don't really have that. We have something that, yes, it'll work for the next 35 years, but it may not necessarily work for the next five as we're trying to sort out funding or need or anything like that. So we have, and stating the obvious, we have quite a tough nut to crack on this one. Um, some of it is regulatory, some of it's legal, some of it is communication. Because if we explain to people, obviously there's going to be dissenting opinions no matter how you do this, but if we explain to people really what we're doing to protect them, how we're trying to do this to make sure that we're not placing an undue burden on people. 
It's not going to create a ghost town by doing this. Um, we're not going to have a mass exodus of people abandoning things. We're not going to see taxes go through the roof because there's like six people paying taxes in the township. Um, if we are able to do that, I think the reception of anything, whether it's this or any other project, is is going to be instrument or astronomically better. It's it's instrumental to have that sort of uh, open dialogue with people so that we don't have people uh, reacting very strongly and very negatively to something. Yes, this is something that I think at, at its current state, people are entitled to that negative reaction, but it, it could have been a very different situation that unfolded. Yeah. I think there just needs to be, like Jim was suggesting, like uh, more communication between people. Because uh, again, there was a lot of misinformation that's out there. And I was given a lot of that misinformation. And um, it just gives you a different perspective. And now understanding things a lot more clearly. And even, I hate to say it, even with all the stuff that I've looked at, the DEP doesn't care about your money. Mm -hmm. The DEP doesn't care whether you could afford it. So I'm praying and hoping that the income study comes out in our favor and or we get 100% funding, but the DEP doesn't care. And I think, Sue, you had that article. It's posted in the office about them forcing uh, another local township. Mm -hmm. So they don't care if we have the money or not. Yeah, that was, yeah. was Robison, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, they, they want it in. They want it in. And like whatever reasoning you could bring to them, logical, illogical, they don't care, which is to me, you know, the unsettling part of it, but. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, just again, not an attorney, I'll say that yeah. a lot, but uh, if, if you took this in front of a court and you were able to satisfy the regulatory requirements that you say like, look, we want, we want to do this. Right. We want to comply. We want to change this so that we can comply and not create a, an undue burden on people. Y you may find less points where you can be challenged on that right but to your point the dep doesn't care about money the dep cares about addressing the regulatory requirements right. that they have so it's finding a way to right. do both and have it be able to stand on its own that's the but challenging part i guess i guess the backfiring aspect of it is they would come back and say you submitted this plan I, yeah you submit this plan you have to comply with it period yeah. ends of the statement guaranteed guaranteed yeah. that's going to be what happened yep. like yep. I, I or what happens um we already know from a previous letter that they had sent us, yep. a rather strongly worded letter. Um, yep. That's exactly what they said is like, you you have submitted a plan. It was approved. You need to comply to the, the items in that plan. So, yeah. Yep. Okay. We don't have anything further on that one. I, I'm sure we will in, in future times, but uh, we'll, I'll follow up with the SEO, try to get them that list in short order, try to get, try to get that letter out um, and try to keep things moving on the income study. Uh, from McCarthy Engineering, we should have that rerun cost estimate, which I'm sure is going to be astronomically higher than it was before uh, for Thursday night's meeting, but I'll, I'll send him a note and make sure that he's still on track for that. Um, McCarthy would be the group that helps find the grants as well. Yes. Yeah. And they had actually sent us some material on grant stuff with like RUS grants and loans. Um, I can't remember. There was five or six areas, uh, but obviously the goal is to get as much grant as possible rather than loan for the simple reason that you still have to repay loans. Um, so it's it's money, it's problem shifted, not problem solved in the case of a loan, but there's going to be a lot more, a lot more about that as, as some of these things start to coalesce and develop more. Um, Okay, we don't have anything further on the Act 537. That's the final agenda item of today. Uh, I don't have any additional comments. We covered any of the other things that I had in line with the agenda items. Uh, Irene, do you have any comments? Yeah, was it, I think in May, we started addressing some of the issue with uh, the print, not the print, so the Ooh. photocopier. Yeah, Irene, yeah, no, she actually, Sue has that as yeah, one no, of her, no, her no, comments. No, no, a photocopier. Didn't we, we wanted to get the drum. Jim gave us like a- Oh, agency. the copier. Yeah, the copier. We yeah. need to get the drum cleaned. So and we got two phone calls back and I just never called. Yeah. So we should, we should look at that. But one of the things that I've been trying to find is uh, some companies, like I know where I work, right. we, we turn over our, our MFDs or multifunction devices every couple of years. Yeah. Um, we might be able to get one of them surplus that's in, in good shape. That is going to be a lot newer than that one. And rather than paying a couple hundred bucks to have that serviced and replaced, we might be able to spend a couple hundred bucks and get something from this decade. 
Um, oh, it's because I don't know how old that is. Too, it's, I, I think we got that. Somebody did we did we have that for a while or did somebody oh, bring that in? Here for a while. Um, I think maybe when Lisa was still there and she left in fourteen. It's it's old. So I think it's older than that. It, okay. It's it's pretty aged. Just I mean, looking at the really unit. What the problem is is the drum is scratched. I mean, I yeah. worked in offices. I know because um, I was in charge of the copier always. Um, so the you know, and that's a big ex a drum is a big expense. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I want to say the one place that called me said they charge eighty dollars an hour plus parts. Was it Service One that you recommended? I don't remember. Check? There were two different yeah, parts. Copy were, Tech. SOS. And two, and SOS, two SOS, yeah. Yeah. SOS called back yeah. and Brooks Copy Tech. I don't remember which yeah. other one called back. Yeah. Yeah. My my point though is if we could spend okay. five hundred bucks to fix it or seven hundred dollars for a, a newer one. Why exactly. not just spend the $700 exactly. on the new one? Old. I mean, it still yeah. functions, but it's... Yeah, because kind of I mean, you could get one that's directly network connected and you'd be able to use it from the computer so you could scan, you could copy, great. it would do color, it could, you know, um, but and I'll like look around smaller? and... Yeah, the yeah. newer ones aren't... You don't. Yeah. You can get smaller ones. You can get huge yeah. ones to do like yeah. like duplexing and stapling yeah. and all that junk no, that we yeah. don't really need, but... We, need um, we got a new one a couple of years ago and donated our old one to church. Exactly. Yeah. They needed one, I said, here, Pam, yeah, that there may be something like that running around or okay. like I'll, I'll I have some lines out with people that I, I work with that work in other areas of industry. I've been occasionally poking at like Craigslist to see if somebody puts something up from an old office building or something, but I'd hate to see us spend 500 bucks on something that's probably at this point close to 15 years old okay. where we could spend like $700, like I said, just tossing the number out there and get something that is from the past like yeah. five and or I six know years. That, you know, we had, a, we used to have a contract, um, a maintenance contract. And they, I guess when it got so old, they, they the supervisor won't said, it. we don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. Cause I know Peter Wallace, I guess Edwards used to service it. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, you can't get toner cartridges anymore. And yeah, you can, yeah. obviously yeah. Can. There, you, you can, it's just not yeah. through a company like that. Cause they wanted to sell us a new copier. Yeah. 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 It's, it's old. Yeah. Yeah. On well, that even, even they have used right. copiers. Yeah. They take probably in, good. They take yeah. in. All these maintenance places take in because they change that's their true. copiers yeah. every they, so many yeah. years. They, they trade mm -hmm. in their old one for mm -hmm. a new one. Yeah, some, some people, some places do it as a lease that you have yeah. it on a lease yeah. and then you just turn them over every five years or something yeah. like that. But okay, so something to look, look at. Yeah. yeah, yeah. On that note, though, we really under budgeted for office equipment. Again, you know, the well, age of things because now yeah. the, the printer, yeah. HP printer is. Yeah. yeah, I took the print. I went on YouTube and yeah. took the printhead out and unscrewed all the little screws and all the springs and clean everything like they said. Stuck it back in. Um, it the only thing it doesn't like is the pink cartridge, and I got a new pink cartridge. And it still doesn't like the pink cartridge. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can replace the printhead for like a hundred bucks, hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, but if we're looking but at, you could yeah. buy a whole new printer for three hundred bucks. Peter Wallace yeah. brought that from AA. Yeah, yeah. A. It was it was donated it to was us. Donated. <laughs> and uh, so knowing, it's old. I, mean, I was gonna say knowing that model, you know, that's yeah, that model it's anymore. an aged it's an aged model. It's yeah. relatively new, but it's not new by any stretch mm -hmm. of the imagination. So I, I think I mean, unfortunately, it is our fax machine, and there are some faxes. You need it um, piled up yeah. in it. Yeah. yeah, most of our faxes are junk, but there are like one or two places that I can only fax things. Yeah, I can't. You email. definitely need to do it. Yeah, um, <laughs> and then any kind of inspection reports that they take photos of, I like to print those in color because yeah. if you print them in black and white, you lose everything. You can't tell what's what. No, I that's agree. That's not the only thing I use color for. No, I, I agree. Yeah. So I'll I'll continue <clears throat> looking to see if we can get a larger MFD yeah. for larger print jobs, having to run out like agendas yeah. or flyers or whatever. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's but, just the checks. I have to photocopy every single thing that I send out. Mm -hmm. So I, I need to be able to copy stuff. I mean, it most of the stuff is filed away, but it's just the age is showing. Yeah. If so, we had a, a nicer one of those, yeah. you could just you just you do what you're doing in QuickBooks and you just put the stack of checks to be scanned and you just scan. Oh, scan, 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 I'm scan, so scan. petrified of putting um, anything through that Peter. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah, that copier is is, is not really the greatest. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Sue has an intimate relationship with it. Yeah, it just it likes knows to just how to do it. I like it. Sometimes it just hey. likes to be touched. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. It works. yeah. Then um the other uh the other well, just as an aside, uh 
we we did not budget adequately for all this stuff. Yeah. Um, going into next year, it needs to be an agenda issue that we well, need. I to... don't use that much stuff. Yeah, yeah normally, the normally, yeah, we we've had a we've had a couple of problems yeah. with things. It, it shows kind of all at once to have like the drum scratch right. and the thing break. Under normal circumstances, we really don't use that much for office supplies. Right. Right. Um, but it seems like this year it kind of blew up. Um, so I so thought you need a bigger one and a, and a portable one too. I mean, honestly, the bigger one is going to be good. We don't even necessarily need to get a color one of those if you have the smaller one for doing yeah. very specific things. So why don't we just um, go ahead and get a smaller one? Still oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. actually what I was going to suggest is if we get one of these, I don't necessarily have to look for a device that's color. Right, right. So yeah. it can just be is scanning. One of these color or no, these are all the ones that I, the prices I gave you are all color. They're HPs. I, mean, yeah. I don't know if I, you're the more techie person. Yeah, I'll, I'll look I'm at used them. To HPs. I, I personally like the HPs. Know, it's what we tend to use. My brother in law prefers Epson, and to me, they're very noisy. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I but, defer yeah. to your knowledge. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, look at the specs for them. One and, and you feel is the yeah, use just, what they use. The one work. that I, the top one is the, probably your best one. The, that one is the one I believe that has the two paper drawers like this one. Yeah. Which yeah. I don't necessarily need, but it's nice to have because yeah. what I do is when I have when I need paper in the laser, I take the paper and I spread it out among all the copiers. <laughs> and then as I'm needing paper in the laser, I just take it out in one copier and put it in the laser and take yeah. it out in the other copier in the laser. <laughs> Yeah, I'd but just to the, order yeah, I I would say yeah, let's no problem, let's but, yeah. let's make a motion to have. And now that we're kind of paperless for meetings, it's nice. I don't have yeah. to use as much paper. Yeah. It, yeah, and it's up to you. I yeah. just quite quite yeah. frankly, All whatever she are, needs, let's let's get she it. Yeah. Need our approval. And and I just, <laughs> go ahead and get it. Well, I did read some reviews. Of course, you always get negative and positive reviews yeah. and everything. So it, I mean, it's these are the Burner, three that well, I should just let you buy whatever you want. You know, <laughs> for this reason, and if it doesn't well, work, it's your fault. Well, I don't <laughs> like to do that. I don't like to spend <laughs> that much right. money. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind buying a case of paper, or pack of rubber bands. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. I don't like to spend this. No, money it's like it's honestly it's for the best for us to vote yeah. on it. But ultimately, we're gonna we're gonna make sure you have the tools that you need. Yeah. Um, that top well, thankfully, one. Thankfully, the scanner on the thing still works. Yeah. Because if it didn't, I'd be lost. <laughs> yeah. The, the top one is honestly the your best one. Well, that was temperamental the other day. We yeah. Scanning just, numerous documents and like. It's, all of a sudden it stopped scanning like we didn't do anything yeah, different just didn't like printers it. themselves are inherently evil okay <laughs> and when you start jamming multi-functions into that it just gets Im Im immensely more complicated um it's wonderful when they work but god help you when they break yeah, exactly um yeah. so i mean at this point i i personally am partial to the hps i have the most experience with them i've had like brothers and epsons and things like that and i generally like the just how they work better yes, and the software is generally yeah. better too yeah. um so I would say let's let's authorize Sue to, to buy the the 7740 unit, the top one. So it costs two hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. And then food for thought for us when we're setting the budget next year. Let's maybe separate office supplies and office equipment. That way, if we don't yes. use office equipment, we just simply roll over the budget items into the next year. And if we do need it, then we it's got it's its own separate little bucket to come out. Excellent. Yes. Um, Thank you. So I'll make a motion to authorize Sue to purchase the HP Office Jet Pro 7740 color inkjet all-in-one wireless printer at Staples uh, for $299.99 plus tax. Second that. Yes, Sue, can we, oh, roll call, Peter? Hi. Irene? Hi. Jim? Hi. Okay. Are you going to do that in person or online? I didn't, I didn't look at Amazon. I think that one, I have to look, there was one of them that was not only available in the store. Okay. So let me, let me actually do this. I'm going to amend my motion slightly to remove at Staples so that wherever we go to purchase it, it would be $299 and 99 cents or less. Might even want to call Carter to see if Jerry would be um, deal. If you're going to go to the physical Staples, then bring them the tax exempt form. I didn't go back there because they don't have, our thing expired. Okay. Yeah. So do I need to? Do you need a second that? Second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, say so somebody second it. Second. Irene. Roll call Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Keep forgetting your name. That's it. Okay. <laughs> That's right. I, have, I have two more things. Uh, oh, thank yeah. you. Real, real quick, if I can cut in with, with the tax exempt thing, I did yeah. talk to Comcast. Yeah. 
we can get Comcast to take off the tax. Yeah, we sent that stuff. Okay, good, good, you're good. We um, didn't take it off the most recent bill. I'm gonna give them a call because I have to pay that bill. Say, hey, what's going on? Because we sent that a month ago. The other, the follow up yeah. on that, because I wasn't sure if you yeah. guys had done that yet or not, okay. is we can more than years. politely make the ask for, a, yeah, I was to say yeah. for a period of time backdated to yeah. be refunded erroneously charged tax. And yes. I think they have to do that for legal reasons. Yep. So as long as we can provide billing, which we can, um, and that tax exempt form, we are pretty much ironclad on that. Yep. While you have them on the phone, ask them if anything else has changed. I had to call them the other day because we had a problem. And she, and she said, I just noticed you're on this, whatever plan we were on. I can double your internet speed for $5 less. I did that at the beginning of the year. Yeah, that I, I, I that. that's yeah. a no brainer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did. I did that beginning of the year. That's something I try to do annually yeah. is I talk to them because I've had to do that personally where it's like, I don't want to pay $80 a month for something. If I can pay $80 or $75 a month for twice as much stuff, yeah. like that's like what, who, who would do this? Um, so I generally call Comcast like early January and have a polite little conversation of, Hey, what promotions do you have or what? Cause right. even though we're, we're like sort of under contract, they can still make adjustments to our plan based on, yeah. <laughs> We can adjust this. Yeah. yeah. But when I call, I got diverted to a separate department that deals with businesses and tax exempt things. So that's a completely different like thing. I'm not even calling about the plan. I just call about mm -hmm. the tax exempt. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that's taken care of. And that's actually, it's on the bulletin board. Good. So two more quick things. Sure. Yeah. That's okay. uh, credit card application has been submitted. I just have to bring down one more piece of information and hopefully that's going to go through. And then what was that thing with the fee schedule, Sue? What was that about? The fee schedule, the fee schedule that we didn't have up to date information. Okay, so we, wait. Because some we of the other need, issues we were using so revenue on were recapturing. We talked about mm. this a few years ago. Yeah. Our SALDO, Subdivision and Land Development Ordinance fees, and our stormwater fees, application fees, need to be updated. Okay. They, I believe, are from 2002 or 2005. Can we? And every, I know since I've been here, we they talked about it twice. And they're like, yeah, 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 we need to update it. But Ooh. now... Um, this is going to be a question for Andy. Can we do that out of cycle or do we have to do that at the reorganizational meeting? So the organization, uh, the organization, the ordinances, I mean, you, you ultimately probably want to update ordinances too, because those are ancient. Yeah. But the fees are adopted by resolution. The fees are not part of the ordinance. They're gotcha. adopted by resolution. So you could just change the fees. Okay. But you might want to look at, I mean, yeah. that's like going to be a drawn out thing. Yeah, that's not going to be a quick thing, but I, I think we not, should start doing. Right, right. It's not because like all the things that we were losing revenue on previously, mm -hmm. we're trying to stay right on top of. And it's so far, like any um, engineering services, we've been sending out bills, we've been getting paid. One person hasn't returned a payment, but we had to send them a revised bill. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm able to use QuickBooks to give me a report every month mm -hmm. and say, this is who is and who hasn't paid. So far, that's been successful because, again, like- If I people aren't like, being billed for it, they're right, not going to pay it. Right. I feel right. like, you know, we're, we're slowly leaking money and like no one, I can't say no one was paying attention and I, to it. I didn't just know, weren't aware of it. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know up until yeah. now that when somebody submit, so somebody emailed and said, I want to submit, um, a sketch plan. What do I do? I said, I don't know. Because <laughs> we don't get that many. Right. Yeah. Anyway, so long story short is I'm supposed to be sending them an application to submit the sketch plan and a fee and a charge. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was supposed to do that. So whenever somebody submits a sketch plan, preliminary plan, a final plan, like we have a final plan submitted too because they're it, it was already an approved plan and they're just adding one yeah i have to send them an application and then there's fees now this one of them and i can't remember which one it is the south or the sun i have no clue how to interpret those fees yeah this uh, this might be a good opportunity to maybe like the next time mccarthy engineering is at a meeting or 
try to get like one or two of the supervisors with McCarthy Engineering um, various times, have them revisit the fee schedule. What What is it adjusted for 2021 numbers? Um, and then uh, kind of giving us a, a rundown because this would be useful for us. We can also put it on the website mm -hmm. of like, this is this is the ins and outs. Exactly. Here's, if you're you're looking to do something, here's a copy of like, we obviously are gonna have the, the saldo, um, but here's the basic steps. If it's brand new, you have the sketch plan, you have this, you have this, you have this, and well, then- that is that is on there. Yeah. That is on there. It's it's part of the ordinance, but we have to- Well, I mean, making it a little more user-friendly. It needs to be, up. I'm sure our rules are ancient. Yeah. You know, because, so I know the one, which is the one thing that's from 1995. I, think, I don't even know. Is it the one with the trees? I think the right one? I don't know. Because there's, there's a couple of things in the saldo that, like routinely get waived, and well, I know we we removed a bunch of them. Told I, if I remember correctly, the sketch plan, which because we got two in this past week or month, um, I think our charge. I want to say our charge is four hundred dollars. That doesn't cover our costs. Yeah. Right. So so Plus then I was also right. told that you can. Um, so say somebody wants, has a 15 acre piece of property and wants to subdivide it mm -hmm. to build houses on. Um, we can say to them, this is a short story. We can say to them, okay, we, we want $5,000 to put in escrow. So as we get our engineering and attorney bills, we take that money out of the escrow. Mm -hmm. and, and then when it gets down to you, the supervisor set the amount once it gets down to a thousand dollars, say you somebody notifies the developer, okay, I need five thousand more dollars. And then you keep taking money out of the escrow. And then when the when the, when everything's completed and there's money still left in escrow, that goes back to them. And so yeah. that way we're not we're we're not floating, we're not right? floating bill. We're right. not guaranteed that we have we're gonna get paid. Yeah. That's the gist of it. So we need to work with I need to look at this, the saldo. Yeah, I think really. We need to work with uh, McCarthy over fees, and we already had contact with the account. We'd have to have a completely separate account for mm -hmm. any escrow. Yeah, that's um, what I said. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we, we, I think we'd want to preliminarily talk to Jim about this, talk to Andy about some of the, the legal yep. concerns around it, and then once we have everything figured out, write out the actual process, like. Exactly. Formal process yep, around I'm this. I'm here five and a half years. I had no clue it was supposed to be yeah. here because yep. it's not written down anywhere. Yeah. And that's that's one of the biggest problems that we've had and that we've been trying to address, like with the, the record keeping and the finances. And yeah, is this yeah. this should be a very routine rote process, mm -hmm. whether it's me sitting here or Jim sitting here or you sitting here or Kelly sitting here. Mm -hmm. um, this yeah. is this should be something that you shouldn't have to, to worry about not knowing something. Yep. You know, and the fact that you know, we're very rural, so we don't get a lot of this stuff, mm -hmm. you know, so then me or another person could say, well, here's the book here. Let me see what I have to do. Precisely. Know, how we do this. As so aside from having it known, then it creates uniformity, repeatability right. for that process, right. that it's not different each right. time that it happens. You know, so, so for five years, we've been losing money. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. At the end of the day, you don't know what you don't know, but right. it's a, it should be a constant exercise to try to make right. sure that you know everything you, know, you can. Once somebody tells me something, I try to yeah. yep. do it. <laughs> okay. you Especially when it involves money. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. done talking. Okay. That took a lot. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> no, I no, worries. no, no, no. Uh, I needed your help with that because okay. like, I only knew a portion of it. So we'll just put fee schedules for saldo and yeah. And then just storm order. As a general item, we should start revisiting ordinances. Honestly speaking, time time is always a premium, but maybe just start the oldest one and try and work our way to, to new review it and see if we need to update anything. And I know I know that Jim McCarthy told me that since he's been our engineer, you know, he's recommended and and you know, it's discussed for a period of time and then it because it's it's a drawn out kind mm -hmm. of process and then it just kind of gets dropped. And but I mean the bottom line is we're we're even if I give them the fee schedule. We're still short. We're still losing money. Yeah. Kind of thing. That's the bottom line. Yeah. If and that's. We want to stop losing yeah. money. Yeah. 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 Uh, obviously, like I think this goes without being said, but the less money we lose on stupid, trivial things like that, the more money we have for things like roads mm -hmm. or the building or 
the playground or literally anything else. Mm -hmm. So even if it's only 400 bucks over the course of the year, it's 400 bucks. Exactly. So exactly. We might want to adopt uh, daylight savings time. This is, this is a special time zone, Jim. Um, <laughs> I know. Uh, do you have any comments, okay. Jim? Do you have any comments? I keep interrupting people. Sue, so, uh, beyond yeah. the printer, do you have anything? I have the printer. And then the other thing is the battery backup. Uh, yes, yeah. So the, the battery backup that's on the treasurer's computer has broken. The battery no longer holds a charge. I came in the other day and my computer didn't work again. I'm like, darn, what the heck? Because usually when I rains, your if screen, it updates, yeah. it shuts off for some reason. It, it has to restart. I changed that. I think I changed that in there to not shut off when it, it It's not, it's set not to automatically restart, but if it does, for whatever reason, your screen that you brought in, mm -hmm. if the computer is on and you plug it in, it works fine, but it interrupts the, the startup sequence and it just gets is stuck. That what it is? Yes. Okay. I, I don't know if it's maybe a okay. driver related problem or just kind of a, a strange quirk of the computer yeah. and the screen. It could be the computer just being a little yeah. goofy too, but the bottom line is if it shuts down with that screen plugged in, mm -hmm. it doesn't go through what's called post power on oh. self test. It stops before it gets anywhere. So like the power is on, but there's nothing on the screens. You can't reach it on the network. Yeah. Uh, so I had a conversation with Sue on the phone, we yeah. walked through kind of unplugging things and restarting it. But so then if your computer is annoying, I can't access my right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we figured that out. You yeah. know what it is now. Yeah. But then the other day, I mean, poor Peter. I think the, I think the power the is. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's fine. It's the battery backup. Yeah. The it's battery shot. backup is really the big thing. So if the battery backup isn't shot, as long as the thing doesn't restart for updates, and if we, it does restart, we, I know exactly what to do to, to fix it. And I can, I've already told Sue and I can show you, show you what to do. Um, easy enough to fix, but the battery backup itself has failed. The mm -hmm. most recent round of power outages that we had, the battery is just cooked on it. Mm -hmm. So really we should get one that's a, obviously a replacement, but is a little bit newer in the sense that you can plug it into a USB port on it. Mm -hmm. And if you lose power, rather than just sitting running off battery power and then ultimately just having a hard shutdown, mm -hmm. you can get ones. I think I have one at home that I spent 60 bucks on. You can set it to run for five minutes and then it shuts the computer down. So you're only actually using five minutes of the battery rather than like five hours that it's yeah. going to sit there. Um, that's good for obvious reasons because you don't put as much wear and tear on the computer. Computers don't like having the power cord yanked out from them. Um, and it also puts less wear and tear on the battery backup. We have less likelihood of like brownouts or blackouts mm -hmm. causing a battery failure in the future when you have that sort of setup. So I'll, I'll look, I'll get some pricing on that. But like I said, we don't need anything weird or crazy or, or expensive. Like I said, the one that I have is pretty bare bones, but it was, it does what it needs to do. And if memory serves me, I think that was like 60 bucks. Yeah. So, okay. I'll look for that too, but thank you for the reminder on that. So, yeah. right, that's all I have. Okay, awesome. Okay. In that case, I'll, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now uh, eleven twenty-three. If I can read that clock right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, second, anyone? Second. Irene. Uh, roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the nice weekend. Wait, let me turn this off before you start.